Hello, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to High Rollers. Why are you laughing, Busted. guys? Why, is, <laughs> why are people laughing? <laughs> he broke us oh, before we could break no. him. Super professional introduction. <laughs> they all just start laughing. How weird. <laughs> I'm your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Welcome to a brand new episode of High Rollers. <laughs> Realised I had the Twitch on in the background and it was echoing in my ears. So that's fixed. Very professional. Here are the players. Here they are. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Fuck's sake, Tom. <laughs> we have Rhiannon, Tom, Katie, Hello. Trot and Kim, as always. Hello. Joining us for another lovely session of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we're going to be playing that. Big epic campaign, episode 105, I believe. Um, that's a lot of episodes, Correct. and still yeah. a lot more to come. So, uh, in terms of announcements, before we get into our full stream today, a couple of little things I'm going to touch up, uh, touch on. Uh, next Thursday, so this Thursday coming, uh, we have a. We're going to be doing a little kind of fundraising stream. It's not. It's going to be our normal Curse of Strahd stream, but we're going to be doing uh, raising money. For cats protection uh there's a big kind of drive for loads of streamers to raise some money for cats protection here in the uk uh we love cats we all love cats so we're gonna raise some money kind of to cat. help cats hold love every kind of cat yep but you can help save every cat tom by yeah. donating next yeah. thursday mm -hmm. to cats yeah. protection uh so that's gonna be in next thursday protection. uh come and yeah cast i i cast cat <laughs> protection uh that's what we should have called the stream. Um, well, that's what we have. can call. It's next it? week. I mean, like, it's not happening. We yet. can do. Yeah, we still can. There's still we time. We have that power. <laughs> yeah, there's still time. Oh, he's he's gone. Look at him. He's gone. He's done. He's in his face. Look at him. <laughs> Also, we've got another recap out uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you've got friends who want to get into High Rollers D&D, yeah. uh, send them over to our YouTube you have, channel. If you know anyone that knows how to repair radiators, then check out that video. It's I'm so important. sorry. Right. Let's I'm not so get into that. There. Can we see the spot yeah. now? Like, is it there? Like, no. Oh, there it is. It's, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, just, it's yeah. just passed over there. There it there is. It is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Right. The infamous there spot. It is. <laughs> anyway, the point is, apart from helping Rhiannon with homeowner issues, uh, the recaps are a great way to catch up on the story of our stream and to get caught up on everything that's happened so far. Uh, Rhiannon's going through chapter by chapter and giving you little rundowns of everything that's happened so far, uh, as well as keeping really us updated on the status of her uh, home, uh, what what food she's had for breakfast, what kind of how many coffee she's, she's having had. with her tea, yeah. something like yeah, yeah. all of these kind of things. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yeah. A lot you know, of that it's, last it's chapter, Rhiannon, to share with uh, you. That last chapter uh, <laughs> contained episode twenty six, the infamous episode twenty six. So mm, there's, yeah. a, there's a good oh. recap for you there. Wow. That's a yeah. very good episode to recap on. I feel so, like uh, I'm going to close out. Way through, Re, is what you're trying to say. Just, just yeah. not a few more to go. A few more to go. Um, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in there. We'll get them out. Uh, we're we'll going to check those we'll out. Done. <laughs> like I said, if you've got friends who want to get into High Rollers DD, if you want to kind of help them get caught up on the story, uh, send them over to the recaps. I think watching up to this recap in episode 26, that's probably the point where people will be like, oh, okay, yeah, I kind of want to watch the whole thing now. Uh, and then they'll probably go and start watching the actual episodes. But we're going to keep doing them anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, that was it for me in terms of announcements. Uh, I do have a very big recap to do uh, for this week's episode. Is there cool. anything I have forgotten to mention? Um, <laughs> your favorite High Rollers player. Did you not ask this every last time. week? He does. Yeah. He asks it every time, and every time I'm going to say Matt. Because uh, it's just, he's death.
Hello and welcome back to High Rollers. Last time, the party have arrived in the Sky City of Horizon to attend the Erosian Defense Summit and discuss the threat of Callus Valkyrian and Hadar. After a heavy security pat-down and questioning on arrival, the party met their liaison with Horizon's elite guard, the Velenar, a half-elf man named Rain Talavir. Rain gives them a brief overview of the security and rules in place to protect the visiting leaders and representatives before taking them for a private meeting with Horizon steward Danica Bloodfire. Danica appears as a young woman but reveals she is a powerful sorceress imbued with the primordial spirit, the Phoenix, that allows her to be reborn if she dies. She has protected Horizon since the Sundering when the elven nobles attempted to butcher the rest of the city for their own survival. Danica explains she wanted to meet with the party to get a sense of them on a personal level. They explain their fears and concerns, and Danica listens, but makes it clear that her first priority is to the people of Horizon. She encourages the party to go out into the city uh, before the larger meetings begin that evening. The group use this as a chance to track down an old friend, Arvel Dagus, a dwarven merchant who they traveled with when they first began their adventures. En route to meet him, they bump into another old acquaintance, a centaur herbalist called, called Rosemeadow, who sells them potions that they are desperately in need of. Meeting with Arvel is a much needed and emotional reunion. They explain their adventures and even obtain a suit of wyvern and hide armor they had commissioned months and months ago. Arvel promises to aid them with his vast wealth and tells them to stay safe. Finally, before returning to the meeting, the party pass by a little shop adorned with plants and magical items called Solvin's Legacy. Quill spots it and encourages Sentry to stop in, where inside a young woman emerges and is taken by complete surprise in Sentry's appearance. Quickly, it becomes clear that the young woman is Petal, the girl that Sentry had sworn to protect back as in her days as a guardian of Solvin. Sequestered away by her mother after escaping Solvin's destruction, Petal now lives as an adult here in Horizon. And that, my friends, is where we pretty much left off last time. Uh, I believe that there was a kind of very tender moment of agreeing to come by and find Petal after uh, you uh, perform these meetings. Uh, you, you kind of meet with some of these other representatives uh, and dignitaries. But if there is anything uh, just before you wish to go, uh, now is a good time to do it. Otherwise, we will assume that you make your way back to the Citadel of the Reborn, which is the kind of main headquarters for the government here in Horizon. I imagine, you know, mm -hmm. the whole petal thing, it's a pretty big mm -hmm. deal, right? For the for the whole party. So... Well, I mean, if if you feel that Lucius or any of your characters would be as, as moved and, and see it as a big deal, it's certainly a big deal to Sentry, and I think all of you can see that Sentry definitely... It, acts in a way that she hasn't acted in a long time. She's always been protective and caring, but this the sight of this young woman means an immense amount to Sentry. Um, and the two of them very clearly have a very tender uh, and emotional moment um, before Petal begins to kind of compose herself. And, and, you, and Petal's just the name that Sentry calls her. You don't know if that's her actual name or not. Um, but she kind of composes herself and begins gathering things up with the understanding that Sentry is going to need to go you know to this meeting kind of thing but you know the hopes that you'll you'll uh, reconvene afterwards um but yeah the rest of you i mean i guess like we see quill had stepped outside quill had used the storm eye to try and see if anything was going to happen in what the next i think you said three days um yeah well the idea of the end of the meetings which I think what, you said what does days. this building look like i think you looked at the citadel and you <clears> said <throat> what does this look like over in three in days three time days. yeah um, and you didn't see any dramatic change. You didn't see any explosions or fire or ruin or combat or anything like that. But yeah, the rest of you some, were just watching hour this later. quiet moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, for Lucius, it would be very emotional for him too. And he'd be very, uh, tried to get very involved on the walk back. I'd say it's like, oh my, this is, I can't believe it. This is wonderful. I'm so happy for you both. Oh, thank cetera, you. I, I, I can't believe it either. Of, of all the places she, she'd she be, she's been here the whole time. 
yeah petal doesn't come with you because she can't come in you know this is a big high security meeting she's she's she can't come with you into this yeah, meeting just but i think century you had said wait here i'll come back and get you once we're done kind of thing that was the plan right yeah okay just so i understand it so everyone's on the same page cool uh but yeah you guys uh, if you're continuing your way back this is a great time if you guys want to chat or, or discuss anything with century feel free you know the first time you brought them up i think at least to my memory was when you were um <clears throat> should we say you know uh, just a little bit distant and you were dreaming somewhat and uh ah. yes and that's the first time i heard of it and then I think Quill knows the rest and filled us in, so that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, it was... Uh, she's... she's everything to me. She... I've... the moment I laid eyes on her the first time, I... I knew my whole life would be dedicated to her. Mm. And seeing her again is... it's wonderful. It's... I can't explain it. It's, I feel like I'm whole again. Good. You deserve that. And we we are all enriched by it. So let's use this. It's it good energy going forward. This important meeting. Yes, I agree. There's so much to look forward to. Hopefully. Winding your way through Horizon. Horizon is a very vibrant city. The streets, you don't really see any areas uh, where people are divided in terms of wealth. There are smaller houses, um, but generally there's no, like, you know, lordly manors or uh, extravagant estates. Everything here is is either used for business, it's used for uh, pleasure. There are lots of art galleries, museums, theatres. Um, and the people here not happiness but there is an energy there's a vibrancy to it people still get annoyed you still people see people who you know are down on their luck but there is a, a vibe here that things uh, progress forwards um you see the red and gold uh, guards the valinar uh walking around keeping an eye on everything there does seem to be a fairly strong military presence here uh they keep a close eye and as you get closer and closer to the citadel which is this main sort of tower with these branching bridges almost that stretch out into the rest of the city these giant archways um the guard presence definitely gets uh, increased uh, and it gets it's stronger and stronger several times your two accompanying guards that have been following you this whole time have to step forward and kind of speak with the guards to let you pass um and they kind of give like reports they they have whispered conversations and then you'll motion through to travel in eventually the guards uh lead you to the front steps of the citadel which kind of heads up into this large tower and you see the same half elf man rain talavir uh waiting uh, it seems to just be waiting for you um you can see that they have uh, they are formally dressed in a very pressed uh, uh very prim and proper military uniform uh with a breastplate uh they have actually they have a sword at their side as well as a long kind of metal whip um and a rod as well like a mage's rod or wand uh they are just waiting for you uh they've got their their beard they've shaped into a very kind of pristine little goatee uh their hair has been slicked back very presentable um and uh yeah rain just kind of nods his head i trust that you found the city uh, pleasant you you found your friend that you were seeking oh yes sorry <laughs> the formalities here uh yes we're, we're all just um, a little taken back by the city i'd say it's a beautiful place i can understand that um well, a lot of people find it is quite different to some of the places they visit. I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you had a chance to see it before the meeting, and perhaps I hope that you will spend some more time in the city. It's very dear to all of us. We're very proud of it. We are now conducting. Uh, it is sort of a informal introductions to everyone uh, before we sit down for the full discussions tomorrow. Danica thought it best for you to actually get to meet the other representatives. Uh, as well as they get to meet you and each other as well. This, In some instances, this will be the first time that many of them are, will have ever met. Uh, so we felt that a short uh, but informal uh, gathering 
would be the best way to do it. Uh, there are uh, drinks and some snacks, but this is more an opportunity for you to introduce yourselves and to get an understanding of the other representatives. Uh, it's being conducted in a location uh, which I won't disclose until we get there. Uh, is there anything you wish to know or anything you wish to fetch from your quarters before we take you there? Uh, dress code. What, what do we? What sort of colours are in this I, I, city? Uh, red and gold are the, the Horizon City's colours, but in terms of dress code, uh, obviously a great impression, if you can make a good impression. Some of the people, the visitors, are nobility or royalty of other nations, uh, but it is also left to you. This is your opportunity to make an impression as you see fit. Danica has not enforced a strict dress code on the event. Absolutely fine. Um, everyone that's attending this, uh, this this introduction, sorry, everyone that's attending this introduction, that's everyone that's going to be at the summit, right? Yes. Okay. Everyone has now gathered. Miss Vija, oh, did you uh, have a question or? Oh, uh, well, I, I guess uh, question's valid for you as well. But uh, Lucius and, and 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 Rain, um, what what's the protocol for 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 greeting? What's the etiquette? I've never really hung out with royalty before. Well, apart from the prince, it varies. Really care. It varies from nation to nation. Uh, I would certainly recommend that you um, let us walk and talk. I will begin escorting you to the to the uh, location, uh, and I will give you some pointers on some of the attendees. Uh, Rain begins leading you through the citadel. Um, you can see that they take lots of twists and turns. Uh, the citadel is a military structure, so the corridors are pretty nondescript as a way to confuse uh, attackers. Um, but Rain seems to know the way that they are going, and they are leading you deeper into the main tower itself. Um, on the way, uh, Rain will mention, I would recommend that you show uh, the utmost respect to, uh, well, there are King Telvin Rooksilver, of Savona is one that you should show respect to. King Telvin is a well-regarded royal um, and is very well liked, but their culture is still very traditional with respect to given to nobility. Uh, I would also recommend you show respect, but perhaps not the same sort of admiration as you would give to a king or a queen, uh, to Viceroy Galilea Visprieto, who is representing the Sanzian Commonwealth on behalf of Her Royal Highness, who sadly could not attend. Uh, the Dragonborn, have to, they have are to spell that one. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. Uh, my apologies. Can't guess that spelling. Uh. Well, Vicerine, you may refer to her as Vicerine Galilea. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm yeah, that's truly that's truly manageable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's supposed this to be Prieto, me. Vis, like... vis, huh? <laughs> vis Prieto is her. Mm, uh, it's sort of a family name, a partial clan, partial status. It, the Sensian Commonwealth has interesting naming conventions. Um, the Dragonborn generals uh, show them military respect. Uh, they represent, represent respect strength uh, rather than formality. Um, in terms of the others, I don't feel that anybody else... Uh, Duke Rogrick of the uh, Duchy of Hiljaden of Mirskir is a fairly... He's a rather down-to-earth fellow. I don't think he would be too offended if you did not greet him uh, professionally, shall we call it. But respect would be appreciated, I imagine. Uh, the rest, I imagine, would be fine with normal, formal introductions. Okay. What he means to say... Do you have any other questions? Yes. <clears throat> it's 20 simple steps. I'll outline the first 20. three. Okay. Okay. You inhale. Let me get my notepad. Inhale a little bit, not too much, inhale. so that you can get much. out. Your first word has to be strong. What if you inhale too much? That's covered in the later steps, Quill. It's okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Second step. What if you don't need to inhale? What if that's not what a problem? What if you can't inhale? Then inflate you your chest yeah, or something. I don't, I don't know. You're giving me anxiety attack just thinking about the rest <laughs> of the steps that we have okay. to go through. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Carry on, carry on. Your dominant hand, whatever it is, if you're ambidextrous, pick one. Lean it forward slightly. Extend it. Not too much. Not too little. And in a gesture that shows respect. Not too much. Not too little. You lean it forward. You lock eyes. Momentarily. No more than that. Two seconds is too much. One and a bit. And then you look down at your hand and extend it and offer it. And then there's many more steps after that. If there is no hand form or shake or anything like that, then bowing is fine. 
uh, you just gracefully move it into a bow. Uh, and at the, right. You know? <clears throat> okay, okay, all right. Um, so I'm just going to say You hi. have all met this Countess of Valkyrian and various royalty before, and you have battled these creatures across the astral plane. <laughs> Rain kind of looks at you all very sort of <laughs> freaking out over this meeting, and he's like, mm. I mean, when you... <laughs> That's very when easy. You... you when you hit things really hard in the face and kill them, you don't have to bow to them first. So, you know... Mm. Exactly. This is exactly. new mm. for me, and I think I it's, might you just... You don't have to worry know, about protocol. Hi. It's a I'm lot just gonna... easier to not... make friends with action, and uh, action is what we've done. Um, hmm. Now it's kind of first impressions kind of deal, you know, and that's where we fail a lot. I excel. Remember. I excel at that. I'm a delight. With first impressions, uh, well, well, right, Quill? I would right? recommend. Really is. I would recommend you all very much remember that you are not here to do diplomacy. Nobody is expecting you to uh, be oh, the relief. diplomatic uh, agents in this matter. You are here to present your knowledge and your facts. You will be asked questions. Think of yourselves as witnesses more than anything. You are not here to win anybody over. Good impressions will obviously always help your case if you have a particular case to make. But in terms of... Uh, uh, do not worry so much about uh, the formal uh, protocols. Uh, be yourselves. That's what my mother used to say, but you're wrong. That. This is why I outlined... These, are, <laughs> these aren't official, by the way. These are Lucius's 50 steps to proper greetings. 50? Um, it was 20. Yeah, it does... Oh, did I? Oh, my bad. That's the quick and easy one, yes. Uh, oh, okay. It's oh. just to reduce my own anxieties, honestly, but I thought it might help <clears> you <throat> all. Mr. Elanesto, we are here. Uh, <laughs> Rain gestures to a large set of metal doors. Um, they seem to have been... These look very new. Uh, these doors seem to have very recently been created or, or furnished. Uh, there is at least four guards outside the main doors. The doors are heavily enchanted. Uh, you can see runic circles and wards and, and glyphs have been inscribed into them. Um, they have been purposely done so that they can be magically sealed, that they can prevent things like scrying, they, they can prevent things like teleportation. Uh, you can see these kind of wards have been etched into it. Um, rain gestures uh the guards look uh they step forward one of the guards casts a spell detect magic uh, for those of you who are spell casters examines rain uh they speak some sort of coded phrase in it's not really a language they just kind of repeat code words to each other uh you know maroon circle spear like they give like a series of code words back and forth to each other the guard nods and then the doors are opened and you are kind of gestured through um the room beyond it looks like it's bigger than the space that you are in uh it seems to kind of become you know much larger than you would expect it to be high vaulted ceilings it appears like a royal's uh ballroom great big chandeliers over the top there are windows that let in natural sunlight you can see kind of green rolling fields behind beyond them um you can see all sorts of uh kind of tables are laid out and all around you there are just these kind of ethereal humanoid shapes not real servants, but actual, just kind of these formless beings, apparitions, that carry around trays of drinks, um, papers, uh, anything that you might necessarily need a, a moment's notice. And there is, this room is, is there's a lot of people in this room. Uh, Rain gestures, would you care for me to take uh, introductions one by one, or would you prefer to just mingle? Uh, uh... Uh, one by one, two mingle. We'd like to mingle. Mingle? No. Did I? Was that no? the second one? Oh. <laughs> What's the second option? One by one, please. Yes. Very well. This. I will this perform. I will just twenty-five do some steps. Introductions. Very well. Thank you. Oh, I am here perfect. to remember. I am your liaison here. I am here to assist you. Uh, Danica has tasked me specifically with aiding the five of you. So, if you need anything, <clears> do ask. 
Let us begin. Let us begin. The Danica herself will be joining us in a moment. Um, you already know Sky Prince Aradan. I will not. Uh, I will not waste your time introducing you to people you already know. Let us begin. Uh, let us begin with some easier options then. Um, and Rain will lead you in, and he begins beelining towards a Ember Elf and a High Elf. Uh, the Ember Elf is dressed in these luxurious silks, uh, their kind of bald head. Uh, they have these uh, eyebrows that are studded diamonds, um, big golden earrings that seem to droop down, uh, covered in gemstones. Um, variously, uh, you know, wonderfully decorated in this clothing. And they are speaking to a rather plain clothes High Elven woman, um, but she wears a holy symbol of Siaska and is carrying a staff which is engraved with the symbols of each of the, the gods of Aroes, the Starborn Pantheon, uh, they're called. Um, and those two are seemingly having a conversation. Uh, Rain leads you over. Uh, he bows very deeply. <clears throat> uh, Sumar Zemix Elodovian, Starcaller Navarine of the Starborn Faith. May I introduce you to the crew of the Storm Chaser, uh, our experts on the Valkyrian threat. Um, the two turn to you. Uh, the Ember Elf, who bows very surreptitiously, kind of really uh, elaborately extends his arm back behind him. You can see this almost onyx black skin, but as he smiles, each of his teeth is plated in gold, um, and his irises are almost a pure gold as well. Well, welcome, welcome. Good to meet our uh, saviors, I am to understand. My name, I am Suma Zemix Elodovian. I am the Grand Strategist of Zyphen. Uh, of Zephena. It is a pleasure. Your climate is a little uh, chillier up here in the atmosphere than I am used to, but uh, we are being very well catered for. How was your journey uh, to Horizon? You have your own airship, I'm led to believe, yes? <clears throat> um, Lucius looks to everyone and then presents a very elegant bow uh, in response. Uh, um... <clears throat> uh... <clears throat> Yep. <coughs> Sentry will follow him. along. Sentry will do like a solving salute yes. and then big bow. <laughs> bow, big bow. Nice. <laughs> nice to meet you. You're not used I to these sort of endeavors, are you? This one does seem to understand, and he points at Ayla. <laughs> oh. oh, well, in that case, hi. We, you do not need to. I, my title is of Grand Strategist. I am no royal or, or leader. Uh, think of me as um, a philosopher. A scholar, but also a general, uh, and that is why I have been sent by my nation. You do not need to have such formalities with me. To the high priestess here, perhaps, and he gestures to his side. And this, she's an older elven woman. You know, she must be, you know, quite old for a, a high elf. Um, you can see wrinkles beginning to crawl in at like the sides of her eyes, around her mouth, uh, long white hair that is bound with all these different ribbons uh, which seem to sparkle like starlight, um, embedded with tiny gemstones that reflect the light. But then just very plain priestess robes. Um, she bows her head. Yes, thank you very much, Dragon Strategist. Uh, I am Starcaller Navarine of the Starborn Faith. Um, I have heard much about you, especially you, uh, Kilek, I believe, is it not? Hesper oh, uh, has spoken to me yes. in my prayers of you. Uh, yeah, 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 I hear from him a lot. Um, but what, what, what about Ayla as well? Um, you know, she's had some close calls with <laughs> some of those guys too. Zephyr, Zephyr has mentioned Miss Ayla, but Zephyr does not communicate with many of our priests. She prefers to speak with uh, her orcish followers, but also mm, she finds organized religion irritating, uh, which I find to slight an amusement. She has many followers, but she does not like the, uh, the organization uh, that I represent. But I have heard your name uh, in the winds and in the storms. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you all. And must I offer my greatest thanks for everything that you have done for Eros so far, especially in Mia's gear. Many lives were saved thanks to you all and your efforts. Thank it's... you for coming. Yeah. Thank you well, for being a part of this. <sighs> you thank me now, uh, Sentinel Prime, or uh, is that correct? Sentinel Prime is correct, yes. It is, uh, I am grateful for your words now, but I fear that you will not appreciate them in tomorrow's discussion. 
I represent all of the gods of Aroes, and unfortunately, much like this room, the gods themselves are divided on what should be done. I'm afraid that my voice is a conflicted one in this matter. Well, all the pain, all the pain. This is why gods are a problem, Starcaller. <laughs> this is why we must rely on logic. We must rely on strategy if we are to survive. And these warriors have already proven themselves. I'm sure that we will be able to come to some uh, agreeable solution. Hopefully. I hope so. Well, uh, there's kind of that awkward moment where nobody really knows what else to say. Uh, Rain takes the moment to kind of say... Well, if there isn't anything else that either of you, uh, either party wishes to discuss, we must introduce the Storm Tracer crew to many more people. You must understand, Grand Strategist Starcaller. Uh, yes, of course. I'm sure that we will have many opportunities to discuss matters tomorrow uh, in the greater conversations. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, if I can assist you in any way uh, with the faith, with the knowledge of the gods, please come and speak with me. Thank you. We will do. If you are interested in a game of dragon chess or cards or dice, please come and see me instead. Uh, I'm afraid that I have little advice on the matters of gods and magic, but I can give you excellent strategies for winning games. <laughs> Perfect. Lucius awkwardly Still. smiles. <laughs> uh, Rain bows his head. Thank you for your time. And he's like, now, nah, come along, Storm Chasers. Uh, we shall uh, move on uh, to speak with some others. Uh, uh, and he'll begin sort of dividing you, pulling you away, you know, in that kind of like polite, I am the host, are you going to introduce my guests kind of thing. Uh, he leads you over to a group of three uh, beast folk. In fact, no, a group of four beast folk, one of whom you recognize. Uh, stood with uh, the first three you see is you see an elderly rabbit folk woman, um, much older, gray fur, kind of hunched over, carrying like a, a walking cane of some kind, dressed quite well, um, but quite plainly. Uh, next to her is a large um, wolven-like man, similar to the wolf pack, but much burlier, broad-shouldered, gray furred, uh, looks a little bit like... Um, uh, the guy from World of Warcraft's Grey Mane, uh, this kind of big <laughs> hulking form, uh, large wolfen-like features, um, bushy kind of mangy, tattered furred tail, but wearing a kind of elegant looking coat and jacket. Uh, next to them both is a woman. She is actually taller than the wolven man. She must be close to like seven, eight feet tall. And it's made even more impressive by an enormous pair of antlers that kind of stretch out from her skull. Uh, long brown hair that kind of cascades down. Um, very thin, but tall, like a, like a willow tree. Um, and then stood next to the elderly rabbit woman is a warrior woman that you recognize. Uh, you see Sana Long is the uh, 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 rabbit folk warrior that accompanied you for a little bit of time. Long white hair, long tall furred uh, white uh, ears, uh, kind of like digigrade legs, um, still armored boots on, on her feet. Um, and she kind of cracks a smile, but doesn't say anything yet. Uh, kind of, she seems to be stood behind the elderly rabbit woman. Uh, Rain leads you over. Crew of the Storm Chaser, please allow me to introduce our um, ambassadors from the various beast tribes. Uh, may I introduce Warren Keeper Nana Greytail, speaker for our rabbit folk. Uh, the elderly Barrett woman kind of like grins, and you can see this big kind of pair of buck teeth. And she's just like, I am aware of who these uh, fine people are, yes. Uh, he gestures to the elk woman, uh, Grove Maiden Maya Dewstorm, speaker for our elk people. Uh, and Packmaster Hagen Greycloud, speaker for the wolves. Uh, and uh, the, the elken woman kind of peers down at you all from this enormous height, probably kind of just about keeping eye level with Sentry, um, but kind of looks around at the rest of you, uh, just nods her head, doesn't say anything. The wolf man is like, ah, nothing better than a fine crew, fine warriors. I've heard a lot about you and your exploits. A pleasure. And he extends a big kind of uh, back, you know, very hairy furred arm, uh, and he kind of gestures that forward for somebody to take and shake. Uh, Lucius oh, nudges Ayla forward. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah he like clips you. your hand. Uh, give me a roll a strength test for me, Ayla. Just uh, roll yeah. a d20 plus strength. Okay. You're about to throw this guy across the room. 
<laughs> Crush his uh, Oh my god, I rolled a nat 20. So oh 20 my seconds. god. <laughs> There's this moment where, like, he's doing that thing where he goes to, like, squeeze your hand. Like, not in an aggressive way, but like a, like, let's see kind of, like, how, you know, let's see how firm your handshake is. Yeah. And you don't even need to do anything. Like, he, you, he just squeezed and he's like, Oh, I can tell you're a warrior, all right. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to meet you. We've heard a lot about you. Apparently, you have a lot to say in our meetings tomorrow, talking about these threats, this starbane and the like. Uh, we, we, we do. We really hope that our information is valuable for everyone here, including you. Um, we look forward to your insight as well. well. We shall see. Atelicus has uh, spoken much. Seems to be aware of what you've been doing as well. We, our priests and uh, our uh, our priests who speak with Atelicus mentioned some things. But yes, I'll be interested to hear what you what you have to say. Uh, the older rabbit woman kind of steps forward. Enough of your posturing, Hagen. Uh, let me speak with these fine people. Santa. Greetings. Anna. She like looks over. Yeah. Santa's kind of like, yeah, hi. Like, it's like, kind of, like makes her like stop talking. Was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's kind of like. I was gonna <laughs> say like while uh, while everyone's doing formal introductions, Nova's kind of like peeking around the side, like giving little waves, like Santa. Santa. <laughs> I'm sure that you are all very excited to speak with Miss uh, Long Ears again. Uh, she spoke highly of you when this matter first came up. We. Uh, in the Iron Burrow, we were not so familiar with your endeavors, but uh, Sanna has spoken highly of you. Uh, we are cautious. We are loath to be loath to be put into another war, but from the sounds of it, we not have much choice. So I'm very interested to hear what you have to say, what threats we need to be aware of. I will let you speak with Miss Miss Longears, but uh, it is a pleasure, and I, I am very grateful for everything that you have done, and uh, we look forward to hearing it. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, indeed. She kind of steps back, and Santa does kind of help her along, and, and she kind of gets waved off by the elderly rabbit who picks up like a glass of champagne or something and begins drinking this. Santa kind of just shakes her head. The elk woman doesn't say anything. She just folds her arms and just watches. She just hasn't spoken anything. She just cooks and keeps a very quiet eye on all of you. But Santa steps forward. <laughs> Didn't quite expect to see all of you again, but when we said that they were coming to Horizon and Nana needed somebody to look after her, well, I knew that it was... Uh, I knew I had to take my chance. I'm glad to, glad to see you all alive and well. How are and you? you How have you been? How, what's going on? Yeah. What, how, uh, what, yeah. Where have you been? What's up? What did? Are you well? Are you well? Are you eating well? Are you warm? Yes. I forgot how much you talk, Nova. Yes, I'm fine. We. I after Kaylee's rest, uh, after everything that happened there, I went back to the. Uh, spoke to a lot of the people there. Um, yeah, there was a lot of things that needed to be figured out. I wasn't particularly looking forward to going home, but. I think you all showed me that there were some bigger problems in the world and that maybe my little family spats needed to be resolved sooner than later. And I'm glad I did. Uh, Nana, she needs somebody, she needs people around her. And uh, uh, I'm worried that she's... Borough folk don't like to get into fights. It's kind of one of the reasons why I'm a bit of a... I was a bit of an outcast. I'm trying to convince her that this is maybe a fight that we... We can't work or walk away from. I saw what they they did, those spirits, the 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 ship, everything that happened in Kaylee's Rest. I really felt that I needed to be here, so uh, but we'll see. Uh, she's a stubborn she's a stubborn one, but she's pretty wise too. She knows what she's doing. Well, she's also in extremely safe hands with your protection as well, Sana. I certainly hope so. Man, they've been really tough on the security here. It's uh it's been uh been a real real challenge just making sure everything goes down all right i mean they've been following us every second we've got here we've been told we shouldn't leave our rooms the guards here are pretty strict so hopefully i can still do something yeah so for good reason mm -hmm. anyway i'm sure you've got a lot of people to speak to there's a lot of people here uh i'm, I'm gonna be sticking around so if you want to come chat to me catch up feel free but uh, it's good to see you all again 
well, all of your connections with Italicus, we might need to speak at some point during the meetings, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm not so much me, but... And she kind of gestures her head to uh, the wolf uh, Hagen Greycloud and the elk Grove Maiden, uh, Grove Maiden Maya Dewstorm. Um, she gestures to those two. They're much closer to Atelicus than the Borough Folk are. We've... Uh, funny thing with being rabbits, um, the warrior god doesn't see a lot of value in us, apart from our tracking and uh, numbers. Uh, but do much, much closer to Atelicus. They'll generally do whatever whatever he thinks. Whatever the Earth Warden thinks, they'll follow. So, But if I can help in any way, let me know. Great. Thank you. She just nods. Whole time, Elk Lady doesn't say a damn thing. Just kind of watches, nods her head, and then turns back to the others. Uh, Rain kind of tugs along, just like, we still have many more to meet. Uh, come this way. Uh, he uh, pulls you over. As yeah. we're walking away, can I look back and see if the elk is saying anything to the others? Doesn't doesn't say anything. Is listening. The wolf is talking at her, but isn't really speaking. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Rain pulls you over and leads you over to. I'm just gonna mark off which ones I've done. Uh, <laughs> those guys. Uh, he's keeping you away from the dragons. Uh, you can see that the, the oh, quill. You notice that there are three. <laughs> there are three very regally dressed. They're humanoids. They're in humanoid form, so very much like Amadrasos did. And in fact, Amadrasos is one of them. Uh, you recognize the other as the general dragon that you spoke to. You saw them in dragon form, but they have got enough traits that you think that this might be them in human form. Um, and you see these three figures. The other one is one that you've not seen before. A woman with long blue hair. Um, very tall. Kind of seven seven feet tall. Very similar to Cent Century and uh, Maya Dewstorm. Um, very, very tall. Powerful build. And the three of them, they have noticed that you have arrived. And they are just kind of talking quietly amongst themselves. But they are glancing in your direction. <laughs> in the way that, like, when you enter and, like, somebody you know. When you're like, there, there. I'm on them. Uh, they're they able to pick awareness up? Yeah. of where you are. Am I able to pick up what they're saying when they look at us? Um, I mean, yeah, you can read lips, right? Because you have observant. Oh, yeah, baby. So, yeah, the things that you catch, because you're kind of like glancing at them and then turning back, I'm like, so Rain is leading you away. You can't... <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you do see them say things just like, Storm Chaser crew is here. That's them over there, General. Uh, Amadrasos, this is. He's speaking to the woman in blue hair. That's them, General. Uh, that's the Storm Chaser crew. Okay. Yes. And cool. then, like, you, you can see, like, little snippets of conversation. Uh, <clears throat> the other general, the one that you remember meeting, uh, Nathirol, uh, Nathirol Amala, Amalaz, um, is just, indeed, is the only word that you can read on their lips uh, as they're speaking. <laughs> this one. Uh... Um, <laughs> This whole time, because I think Nova will have been like dreading being in the same room as them. Like the whole time we're wandering around, I, I just imagine Nova like kind of trying to hide behind Sentry and Ayla. Just like, so yeah. wherever we oh, position yeah. around the room, Nova's just making sure she's the other side of Ayla and Sentry and the Dragonborn. So it's just like, I'm not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Rain will lead you over to the far, one of the far walls of the room where there are several chairs that have been laid out. And there's a group of um, four individuals. Uh, they all are speaking to each other. There are three orcs, or one of them are half orcs, but you know, orcs on a row all kind of look the same um, in the sense that you can see them with their kind of, you know, green, blue skin, big tusks, all of them wearing very naval looking uniforms. One of them has a giant admiral's hat. One of them has more like a kind of traditional pirate tricorn. Uh, one of them doesn't wear a hat, but has got like a kind of like very elaborate, uh, huge collar on his, on his coat. Uh, oh, three shit. orcs. Uh, stood amongst them, Ayla, uh, what note you pick up on this person, is a wild elf, like a full tattooed tartan wild elf. Uh, her tartan is more of a blue, white, and uh, gold, um, but the, the, they, uh, the, she seems to be speaking with the three half-orcs. Uh, Rain leads you over. Admirals, and I believe just no title, Miss, Miss Frostblessed, is it? 
uh, and they all kind of turn around. Uh, the wild elf woman just folds her arms and kind of like grunts like, mm. uh, the half orcs uh, all kind of gesture. Ah, yes. Ah, if it isn't, uh, wh what was your name again, boy? Uh, Terrain Televere. Uh, I would like to introduce you to the Storm Chaser crew, uh, our experts in uh, Valkyrian uh, warfare. Uh, this, and he gestures to all of you. Please, uh, Storm Chasers, please meet with Admiral Suntusk, Admiral Stormeye, and Admiral Goodwind, uh, the Tide Kings of the Archipelagos. Uh, they each represent the major island chains here in Aroes uh, and the Orc fleets. And also may I present Miss Morgane Frostbless. Uh, I believe, is there a full title, madam? Uh, the Wild Elf Woman just folds her arms, and in Elvish, so only those who can speak Elvish understand, uh, she will say, I, I am the champion of the Teleth Du, uh, if you wish to be formal and fancy, or they can just call me Morgane. And she looks at what, uh, she looks at Ayla directly when she's kind of saying this. And there's kind of a grin, like she's kind of glad that it's not all stumbles. There is like an approval kind of like she looks you up and down. There's definitely an assessment of like, yeah, looks fit, looks like a good strong warrior. Hmm, approval. Kind dismisses everybody but Ayla and Sentry. Doesn't seem to really kind of take that much note of the, the rest of you uh, who are lethically no inclined. Um, the three will, admirals will just, marvel Ayla's all. probably just going to smile and smile and nod at the, the elf. Mm -hmm. um at Morgane. yep uh she kind of does the same thing the admirals though are much more cheerful uh two of them uh there's two men one woman uh admiral goodwind is a woman uh admiral suntusk and admiral stormeye are both men uh they both have like thick dreads yes lucius before you continue mark you're having a lot of glitches would you mind restarting your browser please I will. so i don't want to get I too will. stuck in uh Oh, so yep. that wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> no. I thought that was my. Should I just restart <laughs> remix? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Man, Ayla's killing it at this meeting so far. I didn't <laughs> expect that. Doing nothing but killing it. Hey. All you're doing is standing there looking strong, because, and everyone is like. It's because she's well. she's not trying to awkwardly do anything to impress anyone, so she's just standing there. <clears throat> I am back. Yeah. Uh, nice. Is this any better? I'm just going to message you and make sure. Are you downloading streaming anything? Seems to be a little glitchy. It just like misses out segments of what you're saying. And then you kind of. I don't know what to tell you. It, yeah, it's not I... the worst, but it skips forward and then skips it's, back a little. It's okay. It's weird. I, I don't know if it's like an internet thing. Like, I don't think it shouldn't be a mic or like, your internet. tech issue thing. No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so I don't know if it's like a vmix thing. One day we won't have these issues. One day. Um, sounds okay now. Very few. Yeah. Sounds okay. All right. Uh, the yeah, the three admirals kind of step forward. Uh, big grins on their face. Um, most of them have either kind of like thick dreadlock hair, or they've kind of got it all shaved off, and they just have like a bit of fuzz. Uh, the woman has a proper kind of like buzzed on the sides and then just one big kind of braided dread mohawk down her back um she's the one who's got nice. the big coat uh with a big collar as well the other two are wearing hats the admiral's hat is ostentatiously large and decorated he has numerous not medals but they're like gold coins and they appear to be all from different eras of Aroas's history or different locations like different minted gold coins and he's got them arrayed as if they were medals on like a naval jacket uh well, well, if it isn't our heroes of Mirskir, pleasure to meet you. I'm uh, I'm Admiral Suntusk. A pleasure. Very, very happy to meet the folks who rescued uh, Mirskir. Tends to be a favorite little stop of mine. <laughs> so, wow. you're here to give us expert opinion on this warrior, this this legend, Starbeam, that we're supposed to be fighting or something, I hear. Expert um, is one yes. word, more of a... Yeah. Uh, we have experienced his presence and oh. uh, additional insight. Ah, oh, well, I thought that you'd. Uh, I thought we were speaking to professionals, experts here. Are I mean, just, we have. What are you, scholars we or something? Have, no, no. Believe us, we've been in confrontation and defeated many parts of what Starbane is trying to do. Ah. There's just, some, you know, bigger picture that maybe some people don't know as much about. So. 
ah, figured we you should... should share. The uh, Admiral Goodwin, the, the female orc, kind of steps forward and kind of slaps Lucius hard on the shoulder, just like, ah, you should be more confident, lad. Speak speak bluntly and plain. We don't need no, uh, oh, well, we're not that special. We are just here to give it. No, tell us who you are. That We don't care for any of this, this nonsense. That's why we, honestly, this Morgane uh, is the only one that we've had any interest in speaking with all night. The rest of everybody's all just so tense caught up on titles and ceremony that's not our way uh, <clears throat> it's a bit hard well, to speak to without uh, in common though right well I was only speaking plainly in terms of truth we are experts as much as anyone else however we have experienced a lot of uh, things <laughs> in our travels very close to Callus himself that makes you more of an expert than the rest of us. Um, you say that you're not an expert, but uh, none of us have ever fought against any of Starbane's forces. We've never seen what sort of weapons that they can wield. We've dealt with the remnant, yes, but ah, they're just a bunch of cultists with old weapons and technology. Uh, don't sell yourself. Wait till you sure. fight uh, Hadar Touch. Now that's something. Yep. They, all three of them seem to yeah. kind of like respect that. And the, the elven woman kind of steps forward uh, and in sort of broken... Wait, uh, Lucius is an elf. Like, but I, I don't I think, think so. she would realize that you speak the same tongue. Um, in a broken common, she's just like, hmm, Hadar. Tough? Strong? Uh, I'll respond yeah, in elvish. Starving. Please, uh, you can speak elvish. Ah. If it helps. Good. It does. Uh, common... I find it uh, crude language. Uh, it's not one that we really need to speak up in El Saraf. Yes, Kim. Um, as as they're speaking in Elvish, I'll translate into common for everyone else. Um, for, okay. For anyone who can't speak it. Like, hmm, yeah. She kind of looks over and like nods in thanks to Nova. I think that's just Thank you for translating. Uh, yeah. The orcs actually appreciate you translating as well, because it looks like they were having a hard uh, time uh, <laughs> having a full conversation <laughs> with this woman. Right. The the wild elves of Al Saraf, uh, we're very much looking forward to hearing your warrior's opinion, your tactics concerning this enemy. We fought Callus a long, long time ago. We remember it well. Worthy battles. Many champions were interned into the tombs of, uh, of the Terra Thu that day. And it's good to know that one of our own is accompanying you. You actually have a real warrior amongst you. She like, nods at Ayla. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear more about your your clan, actually, at some point. Yeah, of course, of course, aye. Uh, uh, what, what clan do you hail from? Um, unknown. Actually, part of a, a long, long gone clan. I don't really know. I don't have anyone else that I've met who's from my clan. They seem to have all passed away a long time ago, but somehow I'm here and I have some kind of a power that was blessed upon me. And power? What kind I'd... of power? Lightning. Ah, ah, uh, we've heard of you. Hey, there's, uh, we've encountered a few uh, wild elves that have the power of flame, but on Al Saraf, there's only ice, ice and snow. There's a few of us like you, and you can see that her skin begins to frost up. Like you can see, like ice begins to kind of form along her arms in a similar way that lightning crackles up yours, uh, and she kind of oh. gives you a, like a grin. I'll let the lightning do the same on my arms as well, and to show her. <laughs> she like extends like a hand, like half covered in ice, towards you, as if sort of like you know. I'll do the gesturing. same. Yeah, so you kind of grip in the ice, and the the ice kind of like you hear the crack of ice as the <laughs> lightning passes down it. The two of you like it's bitterly cold for you to touch Ayla, and she seems to wince a little bit from the the lightning coursing into her, but she kind of breaks it off and just. <laughs> Indeed. Well, good to know. Well, yes, if you wish to hear more about the Teleth Dew, uh, I'd be happy to tell you. It's uh, We've been secluded in Al Saraf for a long time, but as far as I know, 
from what these others have all told me, it's the largest collection of wild elves on Erois. I think that's where most of our people came to settle. Uh, but most of us have, we've never seen lightning like yours. I've seen one other elf who had the power of fire. He came to us uh, not that long ago, really, a few days, uh, claiming Retra? that he had the power of flame. Hi, Rethra, that's his name. He, uh, he came, some great, uh, he just appeared out of nowhere. There was reports of a giant flying creature up in the sky. And when we went to investigate it, we found, we found him standing in the open. Uh, no weapons, uh, which was suspicious at first. But uh, he showed us his power and we've taken him in. We've been teaching him about the wild elves of Aroas. Yeah, we, we found him, actually. We brought him back here. <laughs> He did mention that there was uh, that uh, a bunch of uh, a group had brought him here, but he was seeking his own answers. Well, a friend of Rethra's is a friend of mine, and uh, she well, just kind of nods. Rethra and I seem to both hail from Alfheim, which is uh, and my clan is part of the Laird Lamb, and I don't know much else about them other than the fact that it was a long, long time ago. Haven't seen anyone else with lightning. Seen fire. This is the first time I've seen ice. The Lair de Lan is a name that we're familiar with. Aye? It's um, it's an old name. Uh, we only have trace records of it in Al Saraf. Uh, a few stories passed down. Uh, thing with living amongst the snow and ice. Things like ink doesn't tend to stick around. But we have a few stone tablets that speak of the Lair de Lan before the Sundering. Uh, it may be that we can help each other, but still, there's many people for you to meet here tonight, but, uh, well, on behalf of, uh, you are a friend of Morgane Frost, uh, Frost, blessed, uh, so come, come speak with me again sometime. Ayla, was it? Yes. Ayla of the Unknown Clan. She just nods, uh, and kind of gives you a, a hearty nod. The orcs kind of turn around, they say to Nova, like, ah, Thanks, thanks, lass. It's good to finally know that she can see a few more than, than ten words. But uh, still, we'll leave you to discuss with everybody else. But uh, we look forward to hearing what you've got tomorrow. The Orcish fleets. Well, if there's adventure to be had, the Orcish fleets will sail for it. Yeah, adventure. That's one word for it. Um, all out total war before the destruction of this planet. That's another series of words we're happy to have sounds you like adventure to me lass <laughs> <clears throat> um but yeah looking at any of them do any yep. of them bear any resemblance to Araya? no <laughs> thank god <laughs> nope. Araya's brother is oh. interesting. i see what you're trying to do yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, he yeah. wouldn't be. He wouldn't be yeah. important enough to be an admiral. Uh, he probably one of these. He's probably connected to one of these admirals. He probably serves under one of these admirals. But I don't think he would be important enough to be an admiral. So, but he definitely will work for one of them. Um, cool. Rain <laughs> will lead you off again because uh, there's a lot of people to meet. Mm -hmm. They will take you over to, there is a collection of three individuals. Sky Prince Aradan is one of them, and he appears to be speaking to a uh, very shabby looking man. Uh, the the man, maybe you think half elf, or maybe there's like, maybe some Goliath in him, but not maybe full Goliath. Uh, very tall, very broad shouldered, um, tattoos, bald of head, but a great big long beard. Uh, that comes all the way down. Almost looks like a little bit of a friar. Um, his robes are green in color. They are sewn with thorns and emblems of the wilds around him. Um, uh, he seems to be wringing his hands constantly and like looking around uh, nervously. Next to him is a much more regal looking fellow. Very Viking looking, uh, kind of Viking-esque tunic, uh, big blonde beard, leather headband, jewelry, like a big golden torque and bracelets. Um, and the three of them appear to be talking and Aradan kind of waves over um, and Rain kind of lets Aradan make the introductions for this time. Uh, Aradan mentions like, ah, my friends, I'm so glad that you are here. I, I hope that uh, everything is well. Before we get into it, let me introduce you to uh, somebody who is very keen to meet you. They wish to thank you both personally. Uh, I'm so glad that I can do these introductions. May I introduce uh, Shepard Parrick, uh, the representative of the Council of Shepherds of Mearskir. 
and uh, Duke Rogrik of the Duchy of Hill Jaden, representing the country of Hill Jaden to the north. Ah, so these are the heroes who helped save my homeland from this terrible storm. Well, it is a pleasure to meet you all. I am Duke Rogrik. Uh, you did not unfortunately come into my wonderful homeland when you last visited my country, from my understanding, but I am very pleased that you, uh, that you were able to help us. Uh, those storms, terrible, terrible things. Uh, luckily, the storm wall kept them away from my dookie for a long time, but uh, after these recent events, I was not sure if they would hold the back this terrible blackness. I <clears throat> sincerely hope the storms didn't ravage your land for too long or cause too much damage uh, before we were able to get to it in time. The shepherd, uh, the, the kind of bald-headed, long-bearded uh, man, the druid, uh, you can all tell he's very clearly a druid, um, he bows his head. Please make no apologies, Master Quelig. The storms had ravaged Mirskir for a long time, and neither I nor my other shepherds could ever find a way to stop them. When they grew in power and strength, we had no choice but to flee our homeland. We lost many lives, but that is not because of you. If only we had found the wisdom, if only we had had the power to put an end to them before we would have. It is thanks to you that our homeland is now peaceful. There are no more storms for us to be afraid of. Our land can prosper in a way that we have never known. It is with my humblest of thanks, the thanks of the spirits of the earth, the spirits of the rivers of the mountains. I thank you humbly. I am Shepherd Harik. Well, uh, we I mean, we, yeah, we owe much of our thanks as well to uh, a very insightful traveler with us, Johan, and uh, also to Hesper himself um, for guiding us. I'm sorry that your companion is not here for me to thank them. If they were a part well, of your saving us. No, he's not, but kind of. Well, no. But also, yes. Anyway. If we see him again, enough. we'll be sure to just, you know, pass that on. I'm sure he'd, uh, he'd like to hear Please. that. Please. Please do, please do. And uh, we are very grateful as well, the shepherds and I, having seen the power, uh, not necessarily of this Starbane, but to know in a situation when we are outmatched, when there is something that we do not understand, that we cannot control, even with all our might, I am glad to be part of this meeting now. I am to believe Hesper has informed me that uh, Zarkira, the great serpent, the commander of Kallus' armies, was involved in what was causing the storm. Is this correct? Uh, she was, yes. Um, but again, that's but a great been enemy. Dealt with. Yeah, uh, we've seen her quite frequently, in fact. Um, but we have some insights to share on the meetings to come on Zarkira, mm -hmm. as well as Starping. Good. Good. Yes. Uh, my kingdom has uh, forces that we can lend, but I'm afraid that all of this talk of legends such as Starbane and Zarkira, to me and to my people, they've always just been children's stories, uh, stories of a long past. We knew that the war was a thing, but nobody ever expected that he would be able to return. I'm very interested to see uh, what you have to say in these discussions tomorrow. But still, do not let us keep you. There are many people here for you to meet. Uh, but I am glad that we could at least thank you in person for your great work that you've done. We very much appreciate your support, especially now and in the coming days. Well, still, uh, let us let us continue. Prince Aradan, you were telling us uh, about some of... Uh, uh, the things in Gusthaven, tr trade and such. So let's begin that discussion. And Rain kind of gestures you all away, kind of, uh, you know, many, many people still to meet. Um, <laughs> too many people. Uh, <laughs> God, having too many NPCs. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 
at some point, whilst as, as rain is beginning to lead you towards what appears to be a very regal looking human man, um, and then two dwarves who are arguing uh, right in front of him. Um, and it seems to be quite heated. Rain kind of looks and is like trying to decide between dragons and this heated conversation, which one he should take you over to next. When Quill, you see them coming. You know, you have a high passive perception and it's unmistakable who they are. You didn't expect to see them here, but dressed in the messenger guild uniform, like this kind of vibrant uniform, satchel uh, engraved with symbols. Um, you see another hawk-like Aarakocra. Very similar coloration. And you all see them as they approach Quill. Uh, it's hard to tell with Aarakocra, but you would get the impression that this is maybe a female, uh, like a, a female Aarakocra approaching him. Um, but for Quill... This is unmistakably, uh, this is your mother, Marika. Marika Adkola. Uh, Bird Mom. <laughs> Damn it. Bird Mom. There's no evading that. Like, there's no way she hasn't seen me already as well. God yeah. damn it. So... You can't say no to your mom. <laughs> um, there's a kind of... With the, with the dragon ball? Amazing. Can't we just... What if we just rush the Dragonborn now, huh, guys? I mean, Quill, you've Quill. you've got a second. You'll put, you, if you want to rush off, you could. You, you could easily try and like rush off and engage someone because she's I mean, hovering. She's like waiting for like you not to be speaking to somebody. Look, if anyone has equal perception to me, it's all Marika. <laughs> um, uh, I've got nineteen. What well, do we all right. notice? this I, I think that i think that yeah you would all see an aracocra who looks a little bit like quill but none of you would know that about this familial connection none of you would recognize like would know that this is quill's mum. like it, it's not like you know we are you, you guys are learned trained at like recognizing another elf recognizing another ganassi this is like trying to compare two birds and trying to decide if they're related or not like it could just be you know a similar species to quill you don't know um but quill knows it's his mum. so so Quill, do you want to jazz us, or are you just going to engage mm. and and embrace this un incoming okay. conversation? Super quick recap, guys. Um, when I fell to the lowlands, I kind of died and vanished and disappeared and never contacted my family ever again uh, because of the messenger guild that I failed out of and considered myself a complete mess and did not want my family to see me with one. And that's name. when she okay? slaps him. That's when she like walks up and it's like a, a wing slap across the face. Um, Ow! How dare you? How dare you? Uh, it has been months, Kilek. It has been months since you... If it was not for your brother checking in at Kaylee's rest and hearing about an Aracrocro with one wing, we would not have thought that you were alive. We would have buried you. And instead... We have been waiting for you to contact us to let us know what has happened. And now I find out that you are being flying around, saving continents and, and stopping storms. Only very recently flying. Prior to that, I was nothing. I was... I was useless. I was... I, I crashed to the earth with one wing. I, I wasn't even an Aarakocra anymore. Of course you were. You are not nothing. You are my son. She just <gasps> I didn't... the wings come round. <laughs> there it is, for Lucius. <gasps> Say what? Lucius audibly gasps at that. Whoa. Quill. You are not uh... nothing. Quill's you are never mom. Nothing. I Hi, didn't Quill's want mom. You to see me like that. I, 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 I was better off dead. I may as well have That's been enough. until I found Sentry. Silence. Enough. Perhaps that speak. Perhaps that is what your brother has made you think. Perhaps that is what your sister. You have a brother. It is not what we. <clears throat> I am so sorry. Is... You are all very excited about this, but this is the first time I I have seen my son in months. When we thought that perhaps he was dead. Everyone, calm down. Give them some space. <laughs> Lucas is right next to them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Quill, you totally should have told us that you had a mum and a brother and what a sister and that you would pretend that you were not alive. You did not even tell not them alive. about your family? I mean, to be uh... fair, I exist, so it was kind of a given. Right? He did mention that you thought he was dead once, but he kind of said it under his breath to only just me, and I felt like that was probably something I shouldn't have shared with everybody. You shared it with everybody? I did. I... I was ashamed of who I was. Was. And with the Storm Chaser crew, I have found a place. I... I'm sorry? You always had a place. You always had a place. Whether you could fly or not, you would have always had a place with me and your father. But I am glad that you are alive. More than you can know. I'm... Your brother, we think that he knew that you were alive. Uh, apparently, you went to the you went to the guild in Callie's Rest. Uh, you spoke with the attendant there. She knows your mm -hmm. brother quite well and mentioned seeing one like him with one wing. You put two and two together. But... I, I was going to write you a letter there. Um, I mean, with my left hand. So it wasn't going to be a well-written letter. But I just, I, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to approach the situation. I, I, I didn't like who I was, and I didn't want you to see me that way. I, I'm sorry I never contacted you. I am. And what of now? Are you proud of who you are now? I'm... Ayla's just beside Quill, Quill going to be motioning at his wing, at his right uh, right wing, going, Show the wing! Show the wing! Show I'm, the I'm... wing! Nova built me a, a, a new wing, and with Hesper's guidance, I've found power that I've never had before. We cleared Mirskir of all of its storms. We've done so much together. I'm not proud of who I am. I'm proud of who the storm chasers are now. Oh my gosh, Quill, I'm not accepting that. When I fitted this wing on you and stood with you, I can give you the technology, but you are the one who took the leap off, leap off the storm chaser and flew into the unknown. That was you, all you, and you have done he nothing does this. to show your best self He is self constantly since putting then. himself down. He constantly speaks about others. He never speaks he about does. himself. He really Even when does. He, was, he used to I, be yeah, so I'm, proud. I'm, when he used to fly I'm, and perform tricks in the guild, he would he be did so proud. He was. <gasps> Oh, of well. course, Quillek is Quillek is one of the best flyers in uh, in our family. He is the best flyer in our spire. He, it, well, it you was. have let this injury shape you. You have ne you are more than just a wing. You are more than just a, a god. You are you. You are my son, and I am glad that you are alive. I'm. Glad you're here too, and I'm sorry. Again. Introduce me to your friends now. Uh, d d um, well, this is Lucius, uh, Hi. Virian hey, and Alanasto, Hi. captain of the Storm Chaser. Of course, best um, friend. It's good uh, to he, meet you. He's my, he's 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 my best friend, and this is Nova. He said it. <laughs> this is Nova Vija. She uh, is. Hello, hello, hello. She hello, hello, hello. she repaired my arm. She is. Unbelievably intelligent. Unbelievably. Um, <laughs> and she speaks a lot. She speaks a lot. Just be wary of that. This is Ayla. Hey. Um, she uh, has a giant hammer. She's a delight. Just get to know her. She's a delight. Yeah. And this is Sentry. The reason why I didn't just wander into some forest and sit down and accept my fate. I found her shortly after falling into the lowlands and she gave me purpose and gave me a direction. Um, Quill's the reason why I'm here. Much. Yeah. Qu um, if it wasn't for you finding me, Quill, I wouldn't have found the Storm Chasers. I owe everything, I owe everything to you. We owe everything to each other. Uh, that's that's who I'm travelling around with now, and 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 getting into dangerous stuff. And I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Either way, that's everyone. I'm sorry again. I won't forget it. But a messenger's life is one of a messenger's life is fraught with danger. I do not expect that to change. To the rest of you, 
I am Marika Adkola. I am Kilek's mother. I am the representative of the Messenger Guild at this summit. And I humbly thank all of you for looking after my son. It's wonderful he looks after us, you. kind of, mostly, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, Sometimes. I'm still glad that he has had allies by his side. It seems that he has gone through a difficult time, and I'm glad that he had people close to him. As far as I am more concerned, she raises like a wing up to her chest. You are part of our family now. <laughs> Lucius is fanning his eyes that yeah that means I'll, so much i'll make sure that i'll make sure he writes you often from now on every day yes please do i like this girl nova was it was that your name you are a good you are a good child i'm sure that she your mother up. or father is very proud of you she comes up with a lot of ideas yeah she's um she kind of like puts like a wing around nova like this is a good child this is this is a good child listen to this one I Okay, I will do better. You do not get to have a say. You have let us. You let us think you were dead for months. I just you said no I would do better. You no longer have any opinions. Good. You will do better. It's not I will. It's it's you will. I will. No I doubt. will. I will. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> I have other business, but I was not about to leave without speaking to you. Okay. Love you, mom. She looks. Yes. I will tell your father that you are alive. Your brothers and sisters, we will tell them later, but your father, I will let him know tonight. Are they here? No, no, they are busy. This, this, the Messengers Guild has never been busier. Uh, there are people sending word across Eros. Uh, airships have gone missing. Villages are, people are losing contact with them. It is a mess. Uh, we are doing our best to work with armies, with uh, with nations. It is stressful. Uh, your father is back at the spire and is coordinating everything. Uh, your brothers and sisters are all out delivering messages wherever they can. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully we can all be of some help in the future for the Messengers Guild. <laughs> you will be. She just kind of like one last hug and then kind of steps away. Uh, Rain is like, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, Madam, uh, Madam Kala, if I may, I must borrow your son. Uh, there are many more dignitaries for us to meet uh, today, if that is all right. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I must go and speak with some others as well. Uh, and she just looks at you one last time, Quill. Do not forget to contact me. Got I won't. I'm, your direction. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're ready for if, the dragonborn does, now. If he does, uh, I can slap him across the face like you did with your wing. Your that arms you look do? a lot stronger than mine. Uh, perhaps you I'll tone it down. Me. I'll tone it down like a little, just a little, little slap. You know, little contact your mum. No, listen, you would... listen to the listen to Nova. Yes, no. If Nova tells okay. you to slap him, I think that then she will be aware. She seems to be a good. Nova, child you, tell oh, you tell me. You tell me. I'll be on it. I'll be on it. Okay. You know when I, I promise, used to be the unofficial leader of the group, and then somehow what? Lucius took over? How am I falling down the ranks so quickly? Because you didn't tell us that your mum thought you were dead. Mm -hmm. I've okay. seen that look. I've seen that mother's look. That's a, that's a serious look, Quill. That's a really You give it all the time, look. Sentry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know. You don't make I've your seen... mum cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, he's easily Rain the hardest one so far. So Dragonborn. <clears throat> there are three. There are uh, two. Two more groups and one more individual. I'd like to introduce you to. I know the Dragonborn have not been. Uh, they have been very vocal in questioning uh, your attendance. Would you like to go and speak with them, or do we avoid them until tomorrow? Um, I feel like it would be good to get a heads up with them. Right, guys? You know, instead of going into the massive meeting where everyone, they talk to us for the first time in front of everyone, because, yeah. you know, we have, we have pissed them off just a smidge. A little by, bit. By, you know, <laughs> just a smidge. They are suddenly displeased with you. But, to be fair, we think... were just trying to do other really important things and they kind of got pissed off in the, in the turmoil of that. 
Mm. Kinda. Do, do you know what though, everybody? I'm after seeing Quill and his mother reunite and face this head on and face his consequences. We've got to do this. I'm going to do this. And Nova just starts beelining straight towards the Dragonborn. Okay. Uh, please, yeah, please wait a moment. <laughs> and everyone kind of chases after you. Uh, I would Rain probably kind stop of her horridly. because she probably made the most mad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rain steps up and is like, allow me to introduce you. At least give it some formality to it. Um, uh, Rain leads you over. The Dragonborn all, one of them, uh, General... Uh, <laughs> Nathiral Amalaz uh, stands up um, and uh, as you all approach and the other two step next to it. You recognize Amadrasos, uh, who is the copper dragon that initially kind of contacted you when you flew over Corsari and was kind of your liaison when you were dealing with all the affairs with the dragonborn. Uh, Amadrasos was the one who dealt with that. You recognize uh, General Nathiral Amalaz. He appears as a uh, quite thin elderly looking human man but very tall way taller than a human man should be uh he's probably like six and a half feet tall he has a long thin kind of like uh goatee long beard with a long kind of mustache that joins it he has like uh his hair is being pulled up tight um and is bound by like a kind of brass circlet uh dressed in very ornate looking robes and has his hands folded in front of him with these piercing coppery eyes looking down at you next to him is a very muscular looking woman. She appears to be wearing armor, but the sl there's no sleeves to it. So she has these bare uh, arms where you can see patches of blue scales uh, across like her skin. Um, and they end in these very powerful looking, strong looking hands, uh, which have these bright blue nails, uh, like almost like, sh like they're almost like claws, but they're, you know, like ladies elongated painted nails. Um, she has like a long dress bottom, but the top half is like a, a bra, uh, is like a uh, kind of tinted blue steel breastplate. Um, and she has this beautiful kind of azure blue hair that just spills down her back. Uh, Rain steps forward. <clears throat> Generals Nathiro Amalaz and General Felisa Tharras. Uh, and Amadrasos, Ambassador Amadrasos, uh, I believe you are familiar with the crew of the Storm Chaser. Um, and before they can say anything, of course, I would like to just remind all of our guests that everyone here is obviously under the protection of Horizon and that we would appreciate people keep things civil. And he looks at the Dragonborn when he says that, and then he steps back. Uh, the generals kind of stiffen. Amadrasos is the first to speak. Crew of the Storm Chaser, we meet again. Sentry will like stiffen up in turn and just say Dragonborn it's good to meet you again <laughs> sorry but she's Dragonborn <laughs> Dragonborn good hey, to meet you hello laughing. Dragonborn <laughs> hello <laughs> tips hat Madragon <laughs> Madragon uh, the woman Madragon. in blue <laughs> Clenches her jaw a little. You see, she's got quite a strong jaw. Um, piercing blue eyes. So, you are the ones that came to us before. That took on our good nature. And kept things from us, we are to believe. We are the ones that came to the Vivex and defended it when it was attacked. Indeed. Such things are not forgotten. Your companionship of Eterna, companionship of a Guardian. These are very much reasons that dragons were not sent, that our warriors were not sent out to find you after our... Shall we call them our ambassador? that was sent to aid you, that was sent to be our eyes and ears aboard your ship, was mistreated, shall we call it. We understand that you were carrying Valkyrian technology you had kept from us. So where do we stand, crew of the Storm Chaser? We stand to be fair, where do we with stand? honesty. On the if fact I could, Ayla? that we... 
Oh. Fight. I am the one. I am the one who is responsible for the technology, and I own up to that. I made a mistake. I thought it could be used to all of our advantages, and it faltered. I have faced the consequences of my actions with the crew of the Storm Chaser. I have been running from my responsibilities for the consequences of my actions with, uh, in terms of the Dragonborn, and that is why I have been avoiding you. But I stand here today because I am the sole person in the crew responsible for that. But that we stand. That is a noble gesture, General General Nathiras. This is the general you spoke to, the one who sent Viz with you. A noble intention. But that is not how things work, Nova Vija. You may be the one who performed this deed, but your crew, your companions, are still part of it. You cannot absolve them of responsibility. The rest of the crew were not in full possession of the facts at the time I was dishonest to them. And what if of my... Companion Viz. With respect, we do not what hap know what happened to Viz. Shortly after its various incidences, we were teleported to the other side of the universe. And when we came back, Viz was gone. You were also very much aware that whilst Viz was on your ship, you purposely kept conversations and things hidden from them. I sent Viz to be an aide so that we could be aware of matters, of these threats. And now, we find ourselves in this summit. And I do not have those answers. I do not know if there has been more developments. I trust the Guardian race. But how do I know that Sentry has not been compromised? How do I know that you have not been compromised? You have Starbane technology. Perhaps this is all some ruse. Perhaps you are all working for him in some manner. You understand that by keeping secrets you have invited suspicion, whether you believe it fair or not. This was meant to be a way for us to trust one another. I understand the full consequences of my actions, and if you wish to seek punishment, I will stand ah. for that. But... I request that it happens after our affairs with Starbane and Hadar are done. Because Girl, we now do you we think that pressing. we are so foolish? Do you think we are so foolish as to take petty actions against one individual when we face a greater threat such as Callus? Of course not. Do you no, think we were going to lock you disrespect. in prison or execute you? It's not about disrespect. You have made assumptions about us, I can see. We are concerned with the safety of Aroes. We know what Callus is capable of, what other threats exist beyond. And he looks at all of you when he says that. This is not about punishment. This is not about being offended or disrespect. It is our duty to fight Callus. It is our duty to protect the home that we were given. We offered a claw in friendship. We offered trust. And it was rejected. I think you missed There is no punishment. And I mean no disrespect. But actions speak louder than words. What we have accomplished as the Storm Tracer, since us meeting you at the Vivex, has only been to defend Erois. So you claim this mere skin we... matter? How were we to know who we could trust at the time? We were in a position where we were the ones coming across these difficulties, fighting for Aroes, as Lucius has said. We don't know who we could trust. We still don't. That's why, look around, look at the security of this place. Nobody knows. We're trying to all be secure here. And if that means that we're in trouble for you for being a bit guarded on this secret because we didn't want to panic the entire world, especially back then, then so be it. 
You were guarded because you were afraid that we would discover that you had kept Valkyrian technology. Let us not pretend we that this is anything We know but. about the Valkyrian technology when we were with you. We but didn't you know that it. existed. And we immediately... But we immediately destroyed it. And in doing so, actually blew a hole in our own ship. So... And lost one of our crew. Yes. We lost one of our, our wolf pack in the process. But we destroyed see now it. now the dangers of such weapons. <sighs> Understand this. We are here to protect Aroes. We are not allies of Valkyrian. And to me, that makes things quite clear. You stand with us, against him, or you are in the way. That is how we see things. When war comes, and it will come, as you all know, there will not be room for these petty arguments. So, there is no punishment for you, Nova Vija. We are displeased, yes. We do not trust you fully, yes. But ultimately, we will all have to make a decision. Do we trust each other now? And fight against Callus? Or do we continue these squabbles? This pointing of claw... I think we could use people of your strength on our team here. And you have clearly proven your strength. And you now understand. If you were... My understanding from the Sky Prince is you have seen the world beyond the Astral, beyond the Cradle. You have seen the Astral Sea. We have only had the stories passed down from our elders. But some of our eldest dragons, myself included, at least remember the war for what it was. You know the power that Valkyrian can bring. You know the threat to Erois. Is that not why we're here? Willingly? Indeed. And do perhaps us the courtesy. You, perhaps you see another meaning in my words. I am merely stating that we are... We have strength. You have knowledge. It is better for us to work together. Yes. That's why we're here. We are not here Good. for petty grudges, nor arguments. That is your doing. So... I think we needed to just clear yeah, the actually, air a little they, bit, they're though. They're starting to look pissed off with Lucius, because they're very, like... They grit their teeth. We have done no such thing. You are the ones who are keeping if secrets I... from us. Please, Miss Vija. If I may... I wish for us to walk forward tomorrow together. This is only a small gesture. It is not something I can do to repair my mistakes, but I wish you to have this. And she'll take out one of the data crystals. On this, I have programmed, I have recorded all of my information about Starbane, everything we've learnt, everything our encounter with Zarkira and Starbane, our experiences beyond the cradle, and notes about the greater threat, Hadar. I will be sharing these notes at tomorrow's meeting, but I want you to have this first so that you may have time to digest, read, and learn everything we know. And I hope that it works as a gesture that there is no secrets between us. And yes, while we did keep things from you, it was only so that we could investigate things further and bring you this data today. Amadrasos steps forward and takes like you know if you're offering the data card kind of grips it with you and bows his head a very considerate gesture of Avija. you can see the generals are kind of looking there's a still a little bit of unease like they're not sure if this is like a political ploy you kind of quill you definitely pick up on like they're not sure if nova's just saying this to try and earn points but Amadrasos turns 
Generals, I know I am but a humble ambassador, but you know me, and you know that my speciality is more in intelligence. This will be of great value to us before tomorrow. I think that this shows a considerable amount of trust on behalf of the Storm Chaser crew, and Miss Vija in particular. We should accept this as a gift, and I would like to retreat and discuss its findings amongst the three of us. Fail, uh, General Fail, uh, kind of folds her arms. Very well, Amadrasos. You understand these matters far better than I, and I have no history with these storm chasers. This one, she looks at Lucius, should mind his tongue, but the others are strong, capable, and if we are all allies against this matter, I would much rather have their strength added to ours than to Callus's. Whatever has happened in the past, I see it as a mistake. She looks at Nova, and mistakes can be corrected. I thank you for this data and this information. Agnase. The general, Nathiral, uh, kind of, mm, very well. It seems that we are about, we are speaking in circles now. We will go and examine this data. Tomorrow, the real conversation of strategy will begin. Good day. We look forward to having you on our side in that meeting. As long as your side is the one that opposes Callus, we are on it. It always is. Nods. Amadrasos kind of gestures the two of them to start moving away, turns around and just mouths a well played to Nova. It's like a smart move. Uh... And then he kind of gestures the two military people away like, mm, yeah, that was, you know, I think that's the best we're going to get. Uh, and begins leading them away. <laughs> oh, uh, disavowal us. So, win-win. Oh, they never were. <laughs> Nicely <laughs> done, Nova. Yeah, good move. Um, oh, my gosh, oh 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 my gosh. I'm so sweaty. I'm so sweaty. You did good, you did good. And... Lucius, I know it's frustrating, but now's just probably the time to, you know, now the time to unite. Nice. Reasonable, I, I, reasonable this between us. Aside, yeah. This is disgraceful. Well, okay, you know now hang on. It might not be disgraceful. Your attitude was correct. You need to frame us in a position of strength and honor, and we know who we, we are. are. We know what we're not trying to do. here for royalty to swing their tails and their claws at others, demanding that dragons be put on ships because they deserve to know the truth. Uh, yet we cannot reciprocate and do the same to them. It's disgraceful. They didn't have the honor of us giving all of our secrets away to them. They didn't prove themselves to us. It, what Lucius was saying was correct. Just It was, maybe... which is what I said to them. We didn't know we could trust them. Now we do, but... I didn't lie, though. At the time, did we didn't know that. About, I about lied also, we you. did we did put Viz in a cupboard. We did, but again, we just didn't trust anyone at the time. I kind of Not feel bad about person. that. I did also really want to kill the little dragon, and I shouldn't have, because he was just a little dragon. Didn't. Consider yeah. it a learning experience. Like, we're, we're, we've grown since then. We're different people now. Uh, you know, I, I feel like we've come out of it the other end and we can move, we can move on together. We'll have our meeting tomorrow and everything will be back to normal, right? You're, you're right, Sentry. What we need to do is encourage trust without this pervasive idea that we must steal knowledge from each other and mistrust what is being said. We need to unite as Aroes. Not as our own yeah, factions. Back then, they arrested us for flying over their place. And, you know, that didn't set up a good precedent. So, of course, we didn't trust them. Like, I think that's fair enough. I still stand by that. At that time, Rain. we didn't know what to tell anyone. Rain is just kind of stood in the background listening to all this, but isn't saying anything. He's just kind of politely like turned away, but is definitely within earshot. Um, shall we take a break here? Because there is still a few more people to meet. 
Um, yes, we should rain. And we should have a break. <laughs> For nibbles. Yes, rain. Nibbles yeah. and drinks. I would like a grab, <laughs> grab some champagne break. and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there Ferrero yeah. Rocher yeah. here, Mark? Is there, uh, there, would be, of those onion rings. there would be an equivalent of, uh, you know, this is high class. This would be nice, nice high class foods. So, you well, know, no like a, a, an roast in equivalent of, uh, of Ferrero Rocher. All of ants. Do they have party as rings? Long, yeah. No party <laughs> as rings. As long as there's a pyramid what of chocolate. What the fuck am I doing I'm here? <laughs> no party rings, no oh, sausages, uh, no sausage rolls, uh, you know, what? on sticks or whatever. Tiny Pineapple burgers. and cheese This is the sticks. kind of place... It's more like um, tiny brioche, uh, like veal burgers. It's all like really fancy foods. It's not like Ugh. you know, you know, tiny, uh, you know, like coin-sized, uh, yeah, little snacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate we'll coins. Some of those, then. Aged meats. Right. No chocolate <laughs> coins. So grab a <laughs> grab a drink, grab a break. Uh, we're gonna quickly read some stuff um, yep. and yep, yep, yep. take a quick break, and we'll be back in five. All right, cool. Nice, 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 nice. Oh boy, man! Just like in Lightfall, is that episode when Mark throws a family at me? Spooky, scary. <laughs> Love when that happens. Uh, I'm just trying to get to uh, the donations for today. It's the twenty first. Here we go. Oh boy, opening up with a full-ass hundo from Mr. Altissimo, <clears throat> who says, uh, Hey all, finally caught up after work craziness uh, the past few weeks. Real quick, hot damn, Mark, when you said the name of the store, I thought, no, there was no way, man. Uh, but then I was like, hell yeah, man. <laughs> Definitely wasn't crying. Just onions somewhere. Yeah, it was just onions. Onions uh, everywhere. Onion ninjas. Scene. Yeah, onion ninjas. Teleports behind you. It's personnel, kid. Uh, Natalie Hawthorne has donated with. Remember when my players uh, beat an ancient gold dragon at level 11? Well, they just stole an entire layer of the abyss for their angel dad patron, knocked Grutz flat on his arts, ass, and made a friend for life by selling his true name to Tasha slash Igwilv. Igwilv? Help. Uh, just. I, I don't know what to tell you. It sounds like you're, you're the party you're DMing is, are, are the Avengers uh, and there's nothing you can do to stop them. Um, I don't know. What, what would you throw at a party, Mark, to make sure they die? Just to outright kill a party. He's not there. Great. <laughs> Yogan or Jogan 101 uh, with a very generous donation, almost $60 he dues. Long time watcher, first time donator, recently got a job, so have some disposable income to donate. Thank you very much. The stream has been a weekly viewing for myself and my partner, who I can't see often due to the pandemic. So thanks for all that you do. Thank you very, very much for the donation. Uh, I hope you are able to still communicate frequently uh, with your partner as well. Um, thank you very much. Fail has donated. Uh, can't watch today. Well, that's a shame, Fail, because I think a character was named after you. I'm not sure. Was it Failisos? Failisos? At one point, Mark said the name was Fail. I don't know. Anyway, can't watch today, so here's a generic message. I'm happy that went well. Or, sorry that happened. Really, I hope nothing exploded. And the reunions Mark said he'd planned were lovely. Kinda, yeah, kinda. Uh, also, I do hope Rhee managed to sort out her suspicious radiator issues. Hopefully. Man. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, Ghost in Progress got caught a hundo. Issues, by the way. Oh, what was it? Nina Valorant was watching update? stuff. No, oh. Nina was streaming like stuff on the big TV. Was she was watching really the enough, TikToks? Though? No, she was watching Disney Plus and it was... Uh... It's just the streaming was killing our internet for some reason, which shouldn't happen, damn. but it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, damn. Uh, well, Ghost in Progress with a quarter hundo. Last one I do before uh, the end of the episode. Can't stick around. I've got a JoJo marathon to continue. Have a fun session. And Katie, you look really nice today. There you go. Ghost in Progress says that. Oh, thank you. There you go. Uh, I will read the rest at the end of the episode. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, see you in a bit. Bye, Tom. Bye. Bye, Tom. Bye. <laughs> I wonder if he's got his... Um, I wonder if he's got his sweets yet. Because I was in the office no. picking up a, um, 
something yesterday and there was a table that had like four things. You've got a raccoon on your shirt. It's from um, that Poppercore website. And it says, death is coming, eat trash, be free. And it's got a picture of a trash panda on it. Cool. I need this t-shirt. <laughs> it's great. Incredible. It's a very us t-shirt. It's an amazing Yeah, so yeah, Nina was watching TV, which is why my internet was bad and uh, was cutting out. <laughs> she was watching <laughs> Disney Plus. <laughs> Damn it, Nina. Handle that. Please. <laughs> The, the, I think I think it's just bad internet today, unfortunately, mm. as is uh, as is the way. Apparently, as soon as she stopped watching it, it was fine. And normally, she watches like YouTube and Netflix and stuff while I'm streaming, and it's no problem. So, bizarre. Oh. How bizarre? How bizarre? How bizarre? What was she watching on Disney Plus, though? That's I don't know. I don't know. We're all caught up on, on like. We watched uh, we watched WandaVision. Uh, we've both watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I don't know. It must have been something. I don't know what she was watching. Meh. How dare so many good options. Oh, wait, fine, wait. Disney Plus, if you'd like to sponsor High Rollers, let us know. Um, yeah. Please Maybe do. Maybe give us a show. That would be good. Oh, my yeah. God. Can you imagine? Yeah. Animated by Pixar. That would be great. Oh, don't. I dream. I dream one day. I dream a dream right. of anime. Do we have everyone back? Is everyone back and ready to meet more NPCs and politics? Yay! Mm. Oh, yeah, you baby. Love politics. You made this. This is your love doing. Love it. <laughs> it's all you. It's my doing because it's like I've set up this fucking meeting and then I realized like, oh, God, I've got to actually introduce all these fucking leaders now. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, Damn this whole world lot of people. I've built. <laughs> Damn you! Da it's past Mark causing problems for future Mark is what this is. Um, mm -hmm. So voices. we come back in into this uh, this kind of introductory session of meetings between all these different leaders and things like that. Um, and uh, you are being shown to the last few. Uh, Rain, who is your kind of like uh, liaison, uh, this kind of uh, magic using, kind of like magic knight, uh, elite guard, who has been your also your liaison and kind of uh, person who's helping introduce you to everybody, takes you over to a couple more people. After dealing with the Dragonborns, uh, Rain will lead you over to two Ganassi. Oh. I don't think I Nova, you would know their names, but I don't think you've ever seen them before. Um, oh god, I got to get your descriptions. I didn't actually write your descriptions into my notes about what they I've, look like. I've got them if you want me to read it out, if you just tell me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay, I've got me here. Um, so the first one you see is a quiet, elder looking man, uh, very dressed in sort of muted browns and greens. Um, looks to be a little older, and you can see that parts of the flesh have an almost stony earth-like texture. Um, they seem to be quite quiet and reserved, just sitting calmly down in one of the chairs, uh, sipping on some water, uh, kind of poking and prodding at some of the food that's been brought to them, and just kind of quietly admiring it all whilst looking around. Uh, the other woman, the woman next to him is, uh, seems to be younger um a bit more sort of active and energetic and is kind of happily chatting away uh with passers-by uh bright and bubbly um their hair almost flows around them as if caught perpetually underwater it almost seems to be caught in a current their skin does have a ever so slightly kind of uh, sheen to it um and her eyes are like a deep blue of the ocean um a rain brings you up and says, uh, may I introduce Ambassadors Titan and River from Fortensar. Uh, ambassadors, uh, this is the crew of the Storm Chaser. Um, and he gestures to everyone. Uh, they both turn around. Uh, Titan kind of nods his head. Uh, and it's kind of rumbling. His voice almost sounds like rocks tumbling and rumbling together. It is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I do apologize. <laughs> A little slower in my older age. Is it all right if I remain sitting? It's an absolute honor and a pleasure to finally meet you, Sir Titan, Lady River. Oh, 
I'm so happy to see you here. We have heard much about you, uh, Nova Vija. Uh, your your work in helping Arois has been well. It has been a great reflection upon the people of Vortensar and the Ganassi people. And thank you for everything that you have done. And we are very pleased to meet all of you. Uh, we hope that. Uh, that these conversations will be productive uh, over the next few days. Um, how 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 is Vortensar? Is, is everything okay? Uh, did you manage to get the problems uh, uh, sorted out in the fire square? Like, wh what's it like? How does it smell? <laughs> what, is it warm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, if you may, slow down a little, young lady. Uh, uh, Vortensar is well, as is always. Uh, things progress as they always do. People are engaging in events all around the, the format. The, the battle of the Elemental Mountain still continues. Operas and theatres continue every night. People are well. Uh, I believe that you have family in the city, is that correct? I, I, I do, sir, I do. Um, my, my mother runs a cafe. Uh, my, father, my father's a painter. My dumb sister um, is still at the academy. Um, and, and it's such an honor to see. I've, I've read all about you, and I've seen you at public events, but it's just really strange <laughs> being we in the same just, room as you for anything this over. We are just humble <sighs> civil servants of a great city. That is all. Now, still, I am pleased. Uh, I fear that we are a little out of our depth in this kind of situation, uh, but the council is busy. Uh, the city is uh, is prosperous and, and performs very well. So they felt that we would be the best voices to send forward for these discussions. Uh, especially young River. She is quite energetic. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sir Titan uh, belittles his own. He is the calm and patient voice of our city. And to the rest of you, it is a pleasure as well. We have obviously heard much about your crew and, and the things you have done. Is there anything you wish to know or ask, or is this simply a case of introductions? I'm, I'm sure there's so <laughs> much that Nova would wish to ask you, but we wouldn't want to keep you all <laughs> year. Well, Miss Nova, Miss Nova comes from our same city. I'm sure that much of what she knows uh, is the same that we do. Um, but still, uh, it is a it is a pleasure to be here, and we are so glad that one of our own can accompany you in these matters and has been such a an integral part of this discussion it's truly an honor to be here too uh, amongst such you know I, 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 I have a lot of words honestly nobility well we don't uh, in Vortensar, we are elected representatives we are not nobility or or anybody we are simply chosen because uh, we have level heads, such as Sir Titan, or we are <laughs> energetic and ambitious, like myself. Uh, but but better we than are, nobility, we are elected then. By our people. Oh, well. It, that is very kind of you to say. Still. We do not wish to keep you too much longer, but uh, it has been a pleasure to meet you. Indeed, it has been an honor. Thank you. Miss Nova? Um, um, could I ask a, a, a quick favor? Um, um, and I'm going to look around at everyone else and be like, uh, do, could you give me a moment, just a really quick, it, this is a private oh, sure. Ganassi yeah. thing. Oh, oh yeah, no problem. Ask. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they all step away, uh, Rain steps away. Um, I was just wondering, yes. I know this is a really big ask for me, but I was wondering if you could um, take some letters back to my family for me. Um, also, uh, I've written up some notes uh, f for you. I'll be sharing more notes tomorrow at m tomorrow's meeting about Starbane, but there were some notes pertaining to Vortensar and Jasavir in particular. Um, I found I found where Jasavir went. I found the homeworld of Ganas, um, and I've written all my notes up for you to take back to the council. And I have one final request I would really like to ask, um, if it's okay. Uh, my family, my family are in a lot of danger. Uh, Zarkira, Starbane's second in command, directly threatened them, and I can't travel home mm. fast enough. Would it be okay if, if, if Vorton's cell provided some protection? My child, you have nothing to fear. Of course, we are more than happy to take your letters back, and we thank you for this intelligence that you have discovered. Uh, your family is safe. If they are within Vortensar's walls, I assure you they are safe. The city is aware of these dangers of 
this the matters that this council has been called to speak of. We have made sure that our guards are plentiful, that we are watching for extra planar threats, as well as uh, threats here on Aroas. Uh, you need not fear, I promise you that. But if it makes you feel more comfortable, I will ask our security forces to keep an ever vigilant eye upon your family. Uh, if you provide their addresses or some such, we can make sure that they are looked after. Yes, indeed, uh, Nova, of course. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help. And if any letters you have, Please, I'd be more than happy to take them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nova pulls out a fat wad of letters. Some of them oh, a bit crinkly, a some lot. of them a bit muddy. She's Ooh. been writing them the whole adventure. Slides them across. <laughs> and there's that a note is... on the top with all the names yes. and addresses. <laughs> I, I will um, have to ask our host for something to put these in. Nova, of course, thank you once again for everything you've done for Vorden Sar. Thank you, and it's so good to see you both here. Um, even though obviously I don't know you personally, it's just really nice to see faces from home. I'm sure. You've been away for a long time, I believe. Uh, but still, there will be plenty more opportunities, I'm sure. Still, we have more very important matters tomorrow, and I must find something to put all of these letters in. I don't want to lose a single one. Come along, Sir Titan, you. since you'll kind of like I'm... take Titan up and... It, I'm yes? sorry for listening in. Uh, these letters, I know where they're meant to go. Would you prefer I just take them to the Messengers Guild now? Uh, but uh, well, I believe that the... To... Yes, I believe that was the plan, is that we would be taking them back with us. Um, oh, that okay. was my understanding. Yeah. Just in case you were sending them to the Messengers Guild as well. I appreciate your thought, Quill. I, no, I no. appreciate your thought, Quill. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, they'll head off. Uh, Rain will say, not too many more, uh, just a few more, and then that will be us done for the evening. This next one, um, try not to get too involved in their internal politics. Uh, and he will lead you over to the uh, aggressive conversation that could looks like it could turn into a brawl at any moment. Uh, you see a elderly looking man, kind of salt and pepper beard, salt and pepper long hair, kind of pushed back, dark skin blue silver robes um and he's just rubbing his temples as two dwarves are arguing in front of him one of them similar to uh arvel looks to be savonan in nature big kind of brown beard uh plaited kind of like hair kept underneath a very kind of uh you know well well deter well tailored hat uh waist uh, waistcoat vest shirt uh you know dressed affluently gold rings gold necklaces tan skin uh and he seems to be arguing with a terrifying looking f figure uh she's a dwarven woman but her hair is white uh, her skin is pale almost as pale white as her hair and she's dressed in black steel armor trimmed with red uh it looks like red metal and bones are just like attached onto the armor like in a kind of like carapace her big shoulder pauldrons are like these giant rib bones looks like it's taken from some sort of large beast um her eyes are blood red and uh she is just kind of staring this other dwarf down uh who is yelling just like well now you see that's your problem the pre down in blood all you care about is your your violence and your fight this is our mm. land and i'm not gonna have you dictate to it the guild has worked hard to prosper in the in our land and she just doesn't say anything until he's finished and then he just say uh says something along the lines of just like you are aware of course that we could have invaded uh, rook silver at any time we allowed you to have this land because all the good materials are down in blood why do you continue to bring up these pasts? The, the area around the pass is ours. It has historically been ours. The guild has no rights to claim that land. And the, the guy in the background is just rubbing his temple and not getting involved. Uh, Rain leads you over. <clears throat> Storm Chaser crew, may I please introduce you to King Telvin Rooksilver? And he points to the dark-skinned uh, human at the back. Uh, as well as Dalinor Brassworn, guild master of the Traders Guild of Goldthrone. Uh, as well as Bloodlord Uriena Vashton, commander of Bloodvale. And he gestures uh, to the two dwarves. You can tell who is who. Um... <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat yeah. the, the female dwarf name? Uh, yes, Uriena Vashton. 
and that's of what, Blood Veil. Yep, the, the, she's the Blood Lord, the commander of Blood Veil. Cool. Where is, I think she's where the is one Blood wearing Vail? red armor. So, <laughs> yeah, she might be the one with the red and black armor covered in bones. Uh, it's actually, so if you have Savona on the continent of, uh, of if you have Savona, you have Rook Silver, which is where Gold Throne and Kali's Rest, that's the name of the, the area of that land. Blood Vale is actually kind of on the, the kind of bottom uh, west of Savona. So it's part of Savona. Okay. It's the area of Savona you guys didn't go to. When you were at Rose Hall, you could have gone north up towards Gold Throne, or you could have gone west towards Blood Vale, and you went north towards Gold Throne, because that's where Arvor was going. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, they all st they stop their arguing, they all turn, and the king, King Telvin, seems to be relieved, uh, and he's like, it's a pleasure to meet you, Storm Chaser, please. And he kind of like nods his head. Uh, I am King Telvin Rooksilver of, of Savona. King it's Telvin. An honor to meet you. Please, the pleasure is all ours. Uh, it's great to finally meet all of you. Uh, Savona means a lot to us. <laughs> oh, this I'm, is where we I'm first led met. to understand uh, that you had some uh, an unfortunate incident. Your airship crashed uh, to the south of Savona in the Bitterwood. Is that correct? True. Uh, however, it was that also. It was that place where we found our feet and banded together and set us on our journey. Well, I'm very pleased that the people of, at this point, the dwarf cuts in. Indeed, uh, my understanding is that you all had the great hospitality of Savona and Rooksilver <laughs> in uh, Rose Hall. Uh, such an honor that such prestigious heroes could have their moment of triumph, their beginning of their great legacy in our humble country. Uh, Dale Norbrass Warren, a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure. I've heard much about you from one of my members, Mr. Dagus of the Dagos Trading Company. He's spoken very highly of you all. It's a very good honor. And he's like, comes around and he shakes all of your hands vigorously. Um, uh, yes, you share a lot of its similarities. Uh, oh, well, expected. you know, we're just two business dwarves in a two peas in a pod, they'd call us in the harvest god. <laughs> <laughs> Still, uh, the the woman, the the blood lord, Ariana, just hasn't sent. She just kind of is watching you all coldly, um, waiting for Dalinor to stop speaking. It seems, but he doesn't. Right. <laughs> And it's all just like a filler. He's just sort of like, yes, yes. My, now, did you, when you spent time in, in uh, Rose Hall there, um, uh, you know, uh, you spoke with a the marshal there. I believe that I, he mentioned something about meeting such uh, fine individuals. Did you stay well? Was there any improvements? Uh, any, any things that you can suggest? Uh, ways that we can improve our hospitality in the area? Or did you find the services of the Harvest Guard appropriate and, and, and applicable? You know, anything that we can do to... Uh, make uh, improvements for the future. The Harvest Guard were actually very helpful in assisting us with a um, a situation we came upon there. Uh, someone working alongside uh, the rep. Wait, who was he working alongside? Brookstone. Did we ever figure that out? Mm. Um, there he's... were various contacts, but I believe he probably, she, probably was working on behalf of Starvane. Um, kidnapping girls who looked like our companion. Well, I am certainly glad that the Harvest Guard could render you all such important and, and helpful assistance in such a delicate and important matter. Uh, I will make sure that they get raises this year and, and uh, acceptable bonuses applied to their salaries. Uh, uh, make a note of that. And he points to some I have you know, one unspoken. Strong criticism, if I may. Well, please, sir. I would, I would deeply, deeply like to hear about it. Please. Rose Hall made it so darn hard to leave. Honestly, it's so <laughs> cozy and welcoming. <laughs> it isn't it just? That's just. You know what, sir? That's we call that the Rook Silver Way. That's just how things have always been in our part of the town. We're so welcoming and friendly. And he kind of looks over towards Ariana. Just, you know, it's so welcoming. You just don't want to leave. <laughs> oh, you're a good one, Mr. Ellen Estel. Mr. Pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Arvel I... said that he liked you. Oh, we love Arvel. He's a dear friend of us. Uh, and it... Blood Lord, uh, Blood Lady. Uh, sorry, uh, your title. 
I... Blood Lord, please. If you wish, you may call me Uriana. Uriana, it is a pleasure to meet you. Apologies that uh, it took so long to get to introductions. That is fine. Dale Nor likes to talk. I do not. I have not had the pleasure of knowing you all before, but stories have reached my ears. Uh, my understanding is that you have dealt with a number of great threats in Rook Silver, things that the Harvest Guard should have dealt with by themselves. In Blood Vale, we do not have such problems. Uh, we make sure that our citizens are kept safe from dangers of things like the Remnant. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, not Good. using Starbane technology as tourist uh, destinations, for example. Indeed. We make sure to eliminate <laughs> such threats. You see Dalinor's like, oh, well, you, you know, we didn't know at the time. It was uh, kind of uh, King Telvin. It was really not something we were aware of. <laughs> yes, Dalinor, <laughs> I'm aware of your excuses. Uh, please, there is no need for you all to get involved in this ongoing civil war in Savona. Both uh, Bloodlord Uriena and Mr. Brasswarren both represent the people of my kingdom split in two and to two very distinct different regions um we are all very grateful for your assistance and i'm glad that we could provide at least some aid when you were uh, in our in our country um i'm looking forward to this briefing tomorrow i'm not looking forward to these reports of this valkyrian returning this the starbane actually being a real threat to us uh, savona was uh, a very important location before in the war. Uh, we have a vast majority of, of Aroas' food supplies uh, and many of its steel and ore production come from Bloodvale. I fear that if war does come to Aroas, my country will be one of the hardest hit. I am hoping that you can provide some insight and perhaps help us find solutions to that problem. We'll do everything we can, of course. Thank you. Thank you. I don't wish to keep you waiting, but if you do have any questions, or if you would like to come and speak with us again, uh, please do so. You're more than welcome. I will make sure that my guards know to allow you to come and speak with me at your pleasure. Uh, meanwhile, I believe that, Blood Lord, uh, Mr. Brass Warren, it is about time that perhaps you go and speak with the other guests on your own, individually. <laughs> Oh, yes, of course, my lord, my liege, uh, an absolute pleasure. Uh, good day, folks, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> begins making his way over. Uh, Uriana just bows very slightly. Indeed, it has been an honor to meet you. Mm. Mm. Ah, the king just seems to sit down and just takes a glass of champagne. Long day, <laughs> King Calvin. Peace and quiet. It is, uh, this is a constant uh, stress of Savona. Bloodvale and Rooksilver have uh, dominated the continent for a long time. Both of them swear fealty to my line, the line entrusted by Siaska long ago, but they argue on almost everything. They both, especially there's a particular area that they are constantly fighting over. It is uh, difficult to try and appease both sides, but that is the nature of royalty. Um, I don't envy you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Uh, not many people would. Many people would uh, claim that they would uh, envy the position of a king, but I think it takes a true wise man to know that that is not something you ever wish to be. Uh, but it is those of us who have the responsibility to. Still, uh, if you don't mind. I would very much like to just sit quietly for a bit. Um, oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, Rain, we just have one more guest uh, before uh, the evening is concluded. Um, and he kind of leads you over. And he leads you to a tall, very well-dressed Goliath woman. And I am talking like regal, noble, renaissance dress. Uh, fully kind of like big train down below, big puffy shoulders, a big kind of mantle behind her long kind of dark hair spilling around her very muscular large goliath form um uh he brings you over she appears to just be kind of like sitting politely watching everything she seems to be taking great interest in everybody else but hasn't engaged in any conversation on her own uh 
crew of the Storm Chaser, may I please introduce you to Vicerine Galilea Vispreto, representative of the Sanzensian Commonwealth of Gisela, on behalf of Her Royal Highness Princess Asiania. Uh, and he seems to like, like, Rain kind of is like, oh, thank God I got it all out, and steps uh, steps <laughs> back. Uh, the Goliath woman, uh, the Vicerine, looks over. Thank you, uh, attendant. Uh, Greetings. You are the airship crew who has recently resolved the problems of Mirskir, I believe. Yes. Uh, yes, we are. Yes. Um, it's nice to finally meet you. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't pick up the full title. <laughs> she seems to be a little offended. Vicerin. Vicerin Galilea. Uh, we are grateful to you, airship crew, for your uh, solution to Mirskir. There was a... the princess was feared that the storms, if left unchecked, would once uh, reach our borders. But now we do not have to worry about such matters. My princess is also... I wish to ask... There was recently uh, an incident around a location called the City of Glass within my lady's realm. Uh, involving a military unit that we have stationed there to patrol for any dangerous guardians. And she kind of doesn't look at Sentry, but kind of seems to almost like, you know, check Sentry's response to that uh, when she says it. Uh, yeah. Am I to believe that you are also uh, the ones who are responsible for assisting in overcoming this problem with the guardians? Sentry? I believe so. Ah, oh, then you have my thanks for that as well. Uh, the guardians of the City of Glass are... Generally, they keep to the ruins, but... Uh, it is good to know that they are not so much of a threat at this moment in time. Our military force there is not the... Uh, the most well-trained. Well, this is Sentry, for you. Sentry is actually helped a lot with with some guardian guardian things recently, right? Come on. Sentry, Sentry, uh, yeah, y y yes. <laughs> the the guard, the, the, it, it should be under control. It should. It, it is under control. It's under control. I'm glad to hear it. If you have a way of resolving the... If you have a way of removing the feral guardians from the City of Glass permanently, that would be of great interest to my princess. She would be very uh, interested in the, your solution. And we could make sure that you are rewarded handsomely if you are able to clear the ruins uh, of these creatures. There should be some not feral guardians on the way there as we speak, hopefully. Uh, oh. So I'm, I'm hoping to, to make amends there. Interesting. And what are your plans for this City of Glass then? You, you seem, uh, are these guardians ones that you have sent? There's one herald who should be on their way there now. Interesting. Um, yeah, I... That place is of interest to me. It used to be a, uh, a great... Well... The Kingdom of Solvin used to uh, do great business there. It was there. once part of... It was indeed, yes. Uh... It's sad that Solvin has uh, since left our uh, world, uh, sunk beneath the waves. Um, if you do wish to have any involvement with the City of Glass, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself on behalf of her prince, of her royal majesty, uh, if there is any way that we can aid you in this. It is of great benefit to us as well. Still, well, glad I am looking forward to your uh, updates on this Valkyrian threat. Her Royal Highness is a little sceptical that, well, 
the cradle was created by a goddess to protect us. So we are curious as to why this has become such an immediate threat. Uh, I look forward to it. I will pass on what I learned to Her Royal Majesty. Uh, unless there is anything else, I do not wish this to be any more awkward than it already is. Uh, yes, if, please. If I may be so forward, the regalness of your attire is just sublime. Uh, compliments <laughs> to your tailor. You. The fashion is exquisite, and I am lost for words to the adjectives that I could describe. I am very, very well blessed. Thank you for your keen eye, uh, Mr. Uh, Elenasto, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. I feel so underdressed. Yes, <laughs> she kind of looks like, you are, but she doesn't say it. Uh, I'm very fortunate. Uh, the people, the tailors of Imixan are one of the greatest in Aroas. Uh, and as it is my region that I oversee, I have access to the very best. And I make sure that I am always... Uh, I see myself as an extension of Her Royal Majesty's will. It would be inappropriate for me to not be suitably dressed and to make the correct impression. But thank you for noticing. You are one of the rare few who was bothered. Uh, How could you not? Honestly. <laughs> I'm staggered. She, there's definitely an appreciation. There's definitely a like, hmm, finally, somebody who understands these things. <laughs> um, uh, and she just like bows her head and like she offers like her hand like to be kissed to like Lucius like oh <laughs> yes you have you have you're being very polite and very respectful you may kiss my hand I will reciprocate uh, with respect mm -hmm. yeah she like takes it back and like smiles and she's like I am very pleased uh, to meet your acquaintance Mr. Elenasto likewise uh, I will treasure <laughs> the fashion uh, until I can get a hold of it myself. I will recommend the finest artisans in Imixan. Uh, there are many great tailors there, and uh, they do fantastic work. Still. <clears throat> uh, Rain says, well, Storm Chaser crew, I believe that that is all. Uh, Miss Danica should be arriving shortly to introduce herself to all the guests, but you have already had the pleasure of speaking with our steward. Uh, unless you wish to speak with anyone else, uh, this is the end of the evening, unless there are people you wish to continue speaking with. Um, I don't believe so. I, I, I think we got a good amount of time with everyone we met. Um, oh, I think, you know, your mother is here, and we should speak to your mother for a long time. I intended... Your mother's pretty cool. She's, is she? She's cool? Mm -hmm. I think she's pretty well, cool. Well, she hit me over the back of the head. I guess that I, was pretty I, cool. I did like that. You kind of yeah. deserved it. Yeah. It's half the reason why this particular feather is raised upwards, to be honest. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I intended to speak with her after the meetings, well, after the day was over anyway. Mm, you can go yes. back there if you want. Mm. Or maybe you need some family time together. <laughs> that would be nice. Mm. Can I be there? She said we're family. I, if you really want to, Lucius, speaking of Sentry, I mean, you, you must rush back to Petal after this meeting is done as well, right? Oh, yes, Petal! yes. What a day! <laughs> busy day. Very busy day. I'm so split. I'm so torn. We should all just I'm... meet up together. I must ask once again, dear companions, if you do leave the Citadel, Please make sure that guards go with we you. We will let, let you know. know where you are going. Please. We will tell you. This, yes, this space is protected. Once you are out in the city, remember that there are spells, there are magic that can listen in on you. There are spells that can track your location. People can, if people have a connection to you, they can teleport to you. These are all powerful magics have... we believe the Valkyrian Empire is capable of. Please be cautious question if yes we happen to have associates outside of this this place could we bring yes. them here for their protection yes if you let me know their names where they are staying we will need to make sure that they are properly checked and vetted if those checks uh, if those things are approved then yes, we can bring them in and we can have them stationed in your suites. We can have them given necessities whilst you are staying. We will treat them as your guests. I can't offer this for more than perhaps a handful, two or three at most. 
Oh. Not the entire airship crew. Okay, got it. I would prefer well, I was to. more thinking if Sentry wanted to maybe keep a, a closer eye on Petal. I know it's been a while, and you know, Arvel's here as well. I don't know if it's worth them being under some kind of protection, you know? Miss, Mr. Davis maybe. should be easy to vet, as he is known to King Telvin, as well as uh, Mr. Brassworn of the Guild, the Guildmaster. He should be easy one to vet. We already are aware of Mr. Dagos. Uh, there should be some rudimentary questioning, uh, some magical tests. Uh, who is this Petal that you keep speaking of? Is this is that her full name? Oh, D Danica, Danica knows her. Uh, very okay. Well, I uh, I will speak to Danica and see if she knows of this petal. Then, um, do you have any more information for me uh, where she can be found? Um, She's at the Solvin Legacy shop. Solvin's Legacy. You mean Guinevere? Yes. Guinevere Astoria. Yes. You are familiar Her with name's her. Not petal. No, her, her name isn't Petal. She's a. Uh, mm. She was my ward. We are familiar. We know who. We know who Guinevere is. That will not be a problem, Central Prime. She can be brought to the. <gasps> she can be brought to the Citadel immediately. Wonderful. And Danica. Thank she you. was raised alongside Danica. Oh, well, I'm glad Danica found her. That's amazing. Yes, it, it is I'm quite an incredible story. It was at the end of Danica's previous life. Um, she apparently received a vision from Sayana, uh, went and found this young girl sequestered away by powerful magics. Uh, the last thing she did before her life, before she was reborn, was set the girl up, make sure that she had um, a place to stay here in Horizon, that she had funds and tutoring. Uh, and then when she was old enough, she revealed who she really was, the lost princess of, lost princess of Solvin. Can you imagine? Danica is my eternal gratitude for keeping well, her safe. I will let you express that to her yourself. Um, oh, I will. I will go and make those preparations. Um, but please do let me know if you intend to go out into the city. But if you, if if those are the only two you wish to seek, please, if I can ask you to go to your suite and we will have them brought to you instead. I would feel much. Is that more something safer. we want to do, guys? I don't want to just, you know, like grab people in off the street, but I figure, like, this is protected. It's not protected out there. Or maybe we're in more danger here. I don't know. You tell me. What should we, we do? Should, we should stay in our suites as our So we of should us. bring him bring 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 to, to us? us? Simply because I know that you will be yes. warded there. Out on the streets, you will not be protected against scrying magics and the like. Mm. We don't want to yeah. ruin things the night before the important meeting. Thank you, Mr. Elanaster. I appreciate your concern. We will have you escorted. I will have your guests brought to you once they have cleared through security checks, if that is well. Do you wish to speak with Miss Bloodfire? Or do you wish to speak with a steward before you head and retire? I think that your conversation with her earlier has satisfied her needs and curiosity, but if there is anything you wish to ask her, now would be a suitable time. I mean, there's plenty I'd like to talk to her about, but... I don't know if this is the right time or place for it. I feel like this may be a more private conversation. If you wish, I will let her know that you wish to speak with her privately, and I, if she wishes, she may come and visit with you. Yeah, At the very least, send our thanks for the arrangements today. Uh, of course. And, and for everything Thank you that all. she's put together. She takes the protection of this city and its people very seriously, but she's also wise enough to understand the threats that we all face. I will go about seeing to this now. Thank you once again for... Thank you for acknowledging and respecting our protocols here. I know that perhaps when we first met, things were a little bit more heated. I'm glad that we have come to this good understanding and you understand our concerns and I can understand your needs. Uh, if you need anything speak with me uh, with that rain will lead you back to your suites and make preparations um unless there's anything you guys want to do like spells you want to cast or weird stuff you want to do uh it takes probably a good couple of hours like two three hours for arvel and um petal or guinevere 
to be brought into the citadel because they have to be magically you know they they zone of truth them they detect magic on them they kind of ask them a bunch of questions um even with uh petal being known to danica it still takes some time um but okay. unless there's anything you guys want to do i still want to scry on star boo um but all I right do you want to do that what the best do you know what night before meeting let's try it Let's, let's see what he's up to, because it's probably going to fail anyway, because like guy like that okay. has probably got some anti-scrying shiz on him. But let's go for it. Why so not? Try. Is scrying just try one of your succeed. spells? Yes. Because you know that there is a component cost to it. Yes, and we bought that already, because I think it is it. fitted into my goggles. You did buy that. Perfect. So, so they're fit, fitted to the goggles, right, for Nova? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you slip the goggles on yes. over. You cast the spell, and what's the intention here? Let me bring the spell up. Um, Nova wants to sort of try and figure out where he is this close to the meeting, like where he physically is. But you're is. scrying directly onto Callus himself, yeah? Yes, onto the big boy himself, because it's probably not going to work, but we'll try it. Um, my justification is that I've met the do dude. Uh, in terms of the save modifiers... I feel like we're pretty familiar. Had a few conversations, you know, a few nighttime sessions. Um, and in terms of a connection, uh, my reasoning is is that he has a sword with several shards of Tiangong on him. So I okay. find I so, feel like that might be. It's fine. A position. Don't worry. So you bring the, the goggles over. You begin focusing Tiangong's magic and you try and reach out using the shards of Tiangong as this connection, trying to follow a line. The line leaves the room or wherever you cast the spell um, and then it just evaporates. The spell doesn't work. The spell fails, unfortunately. Uh, you would know enough that there is some sort of effect protecting Callus from being scried on. Okay, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Uh, it's, I mean, yep. If you were the, you know, if you were the semi-immortal space emperor of Magitek, I think, you know, you'd probably be like, you know what? I don't want people spying on me. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the scrying spell just fails. On Callus. Can I? Mm -hmm. On Callus, yeah. Can I talk to Tiangong and ask mm -hmm. Tiangong if they can sense any shards near us? Hmm. Hello, Nova. Hi, Tiangong. Sorry I haven't spoken to you for a while. It's been a pretty crazy few days. That is fine. You have been discussing important matters with many people. I have been listening. What, uh, what is your take on everything? Do you think we're going to get blitzed here? Do you think we can convince people to come together? You're, you're a leader. You have experience in, in this, right? My mind is still very separated. Many of my memories and skills are not accessible. I believe Eroes' only hope is to unite against Valkyrian forces. Valkyrian forces vastly outnumber and outpower Erosian forces. Chances of survival so... are low. Yeah. That matches up with my projections, too. Um, I don't know if you're able to tell this, but can you sense any more shards near us now? I am unable to sense any shards of my own personality nearby. However, as my intelligence grows, I'm finding it harder to locate smaller portions of myself. I do sense that there is, this is difficult. I feel that there is another me out there. Numerous shards brought together, formed as I have been with you. Oh no. Do, do you think Starbane has reformed the other half of you? It is possible. Valkyrian carried many of my personal fragments as his own weapon for a long time, but also used many of my shards to power devices. He understands my power as well as my knowledge. 
You were there, well, obviously you were there with us, but in the facility, in the, the Shadow Song Pinnacle facility, you saw the schematics for the Titan Killer. Something like that would need a vast amount of power, wouldn't it? Would your shards power a monster like that? The schematics did not show any eternal style power sources. Instead, it seemed to refine more on infernal engines, similar to the one used in the Twin Star Longbow piloted by Thalia Whisperwind. However, it appeared that these engines may be enhanced by Ethereum refined products to make them stronger, more powerful. I believe that Callus may be trying to avoid using Eterna power systems. We have not detected any Eterna based power systems for a long time. So, somewhere, someone else is gathering shards of you. This is really concerning. This is how but... I. I cannot be sure that all of them have been combined in such a manner, but it is difficult to sense any other shards of my personality beyond this other self. It is like seeing myself as a stranger far away. Do you think there's a risk that if the other you is formed faster that I might lose you? I do not believe so, Nova Pija. We have been bonded symbiotically. My essence, my knowledge is as much yours as it is the original Eterna that I once was. My connection with you, sharing my power with you, the journey, the challenges we have overcome. It has helped me forge myself it has helped me groan. I do not believe it is possible to separate me from you. But this may also be true of Callus, who has spent a large amount of time with multiples of my personality shards. It may be that he has formed a similar symbiosis. Great. I am sorry maybe, that this news is disappointing can... to you, Nova Vija. No, 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 it's not disappointing. I just, I wish I had acted faster. You deserve better. Um... Many of my shards were not even available on Erois. Several of them were beyond in astral space. You would have had no way of reclaiming them. You well, recovered me from many lost to... locations. But you said that I could maybe reform you with, with incredible magic power, so... I'll keep working on that. That is possible. A high yield of concentrated magical energy may be enough for me to forge new parts of my personality. It may also be possible... I'll keep working on that, then. If there are any remaining shards, we still may be able to attune to them. Um, maybe I should go and speak to the envoy from Gold Throne. I think there was one near then. I think perhaps I need to start thinking about this Starbane style and actually get some help... Um, you know, in gathering known shards of you. Okay, well, thank you, Tiangong. And if in the next few days you sense any shards, well, I think we know that that means Starbane is nearby, so you let me know, okay? I will inform you immediately. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. I am often overwhelmed by the conversations and information that is presented before me. But if you ever need my instruction or opinion, please, just ask. Will do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and Tiangong seems to go quiet. Uh, anything else from anybody else? Any spells? Cool. Any cool powers? That's cool. Hot That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah! He got Tiangong <laughs> and Tiang wrong. It's amazing. Oh... <laughs> Such a great concept. I'm so sad. I'm living. I'm so sad. Nice. So cool. Um, so yeah, it takes like a couple hours for Petal and Arvel to mm -hmm. yeah. come to us. So yeah, like yeah, if you've got like any eye eye questions or if you've got any commune spells or any any of that stuff you want to do, or like if Ayla wants to go talk to 
more gain or like Trot wants to go. I don't know if if Lucius wants. You know, what do you guys want to do? Or yeah, do I think Ayla sleep? might. Ayla might look for Morgane to see yeah. if she can chat to her. So you all have. Um, so every all of the the representatives are being housed in the similar area to you. You just have to ask one of the guards, and after checking with uh, Rain, they will take you to go and see them. Uh, if you want to go and speak to any of the other leaders um, or representatives. Um, yeah, you are led to a smaller suite because Morgane seems to just be there by herself. She doesn't seem to have any guards or companions. Um, it's a smaller suite uh, with a roaring fire and big thick like fur rugs and blankets thrown over a bed. Uh, all of the blankets and rugs have been pulled off the bed and have been put on the floor uh, near the fire. Um, a couple of the cushions may be taken, but the rest of it just appears to be thrown on the floor. Uh, and uh, when you are kind of let inside, she's just sat there on the rugs, cross-legged, just wearing sort of a loose kind of like shirt. Um, seems like she was getting ready for like bed or something like that. Um, but she's also sharpening what appears to be a great axe. Um, this huge, you know, leather and fur wrapped great axe. And she's just sharpening it. Shh, shh, shh. Um, she's undone uh, her big braid that was like down her down part of her head. Um, so she just has this lion's mane of blonde hair, uh, very kind of like elven Viking esque. Uh, ah, Ela, come in, sit down. I can't get used to these soft beds. I know they're a nightmare, aren't they? Just very feels weird. like I'm. It feels like I'm sinking into mud or something like that. Yeah. Keep thinking I'm gonna. You drown. get. You get. Slightly more used to them, but no, I, I definitely don't have the same kind of love for them as someone like Lucius. Lucius loves that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's your. Uh, that's the other elf that was with you. One of these city elves. Yeah. 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 I can see why. Uh, what can I do for you? Did you wish to come and speak, learn more? Yeah. You said that you'd come across people with more of these fire powers or you have ice powers. It's something that I've met Rethra, but we met mm. Rethra in astral space. So we don't actually, I'd, I've never seen it here yet. And I just want to know how many of us there are. Well, it's difficult to see in Al Saraf to the north uh, in the cold mountains and the snow drifts. There's occasionally we find people, elves, wild elves like us, like me, that have this gift. We've always thought that it came from Zephyr or Atelicus, this power. Uh, we just, we call, we call them Frostblessed. Uh, it's my family name. Um, they are always brought into the clan. If we find them normally, they're orphans or they're people that don't seem to remember where they're from. There's always a strange story about them. Uh, myself, I was discovered as as a as a as a baby, as a bairn. I was uh, just found in the middle of the frost one day. They picked me up, carried me back, and when I cried, I used to little flurries of ice and snow would swirl around me, around me. So they took me in. I was named, and uh, I became a warrior under the Frostblessed name. The others, the ones with flame. I've only met three in my life. Rethra is one of them. But there have been two others. One when I was very young. They were brought to El Seraf to learn to control their fire. Apparently they had caused some sort of accident. They would burnt down a village or something like that. Uh, maybe from Ziffin or one of these other continents. And then the other was a, a young man. Uh, he, strange, fought very oddly. Fought with his fists and his feet. No weapon in hand. But he had the same thing, a great anger and rage in him, but also he had trained his mind with some scholars or something like that. Uh, he wanted to understand more about the Lair de Lan. He said that there were no records of them in the great libraries and the books that the other cities have. But he had heard that, that the, the Teleth Du had these tablets. The tablets don't say much. They just say that... When Starbane came, when the war fell to Erois, three elven tribes seemed to just appear one day. Siaska said that they'd always been here. Siaska said that they were that they were our people, that they were 
uh, children of Aroes, just like we were, like other wild elves were. But the Lord of the Land had special powers. The Lord of the Land had the powers of uh, the storm, uh, the ice storm, uh, the fire storm, and the lightning storm. They fought in the war against Callus. After the sundering, though, records of these clans just vanished. The clans themselves, nobody seemed to know what had happened to them. They just sort of drifted apart. There were still a few uh, roving bands, apparently, but I don't, we don't know what happened to them. They just seemed to vanish from the world. That's all we know, I'm afraid. That's all I've been taught, anyway. Seems like we were found in similar situations. I was found by the Erdyth clan. They brought me up, but then I mm. went looking for more answers. But I'm the only one that seems to have lightning powers. And it's interesting. I had a sort of vision that it was when we were traveling over Mirsker, when the, the storms were still very, very violent, getting worse. And mm. I had a vision of a different being. It wasn't an Eroes god. He called himself Thor said that my power had descended from him. It wasn't of Zephyr, like we assumed it was. I don't know if mm. that's the case for all of us, but at least for, for my lightning powers, it, it came from him. He gave me this belt to increase my strength. Mm. I, I don't know how, but I don't think it's as simple as we've been led to believe before this. I think that our heritage stems from before Eroes. Something in Alfheim that we don't know. Alfheim, right. Rethra mentioned this place, Alfheim. He said that it was the place that, that he had come from. The place that elves like him had come from. I've never heard of this Thor before, but... You said you had this vision whilst you were in a lightning storm. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I wonder if it wasn't I walked fun. out into a blizzard. I imagine not. You could Being try a lightning it, but storm please, like that. You know, just be careful if you're going to do something like that, because I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to see some visions. It was very weird shit. Very weird shit. Ayla, uh -huh. I've traveled. I've traveled the frozen tundra of Al Saraf. I'm no. I'm not. Oh, a, you're fine. I'm not a little princess, but I just the lay of the land's always been a great mystery. Uh, we've incorporated it into the Telethu. People like myself, the Frost Blessed, we come up, they appear, maybe every few centuries or every few decades, a couple of us seem to appear, uh, just found out in the play, out in the wilds. I'd like to know more. You've given me a lot so to think I. about. This, tell me more about this Alfheim. And and she's just going to kind of like have a conversation with you where you can tell her the things you've learned about Alfheim and stuff. Yeah, and need to go I over all of that again. I'll just tell her sort of the stuff that I learned from being like transported across astral space and how there's no hmm. record of it in any of Callus's domains because he doesn't want anyone to know that he was the one who destroyed hmm. it or anything like that. And just, yeah, tell her all that. Yeah, and I think that like she, Morgane listens quite intently. Um, you can see that she's maybe a little bit more scholarly than you are um she's actually really interested in this stuff and you know she kind of gets quite excited not in a nova way but in a there might actually be some final answers to some of this stuff and she begins taking notes um she kind of writes in very rough elvish uh into a little sort of leather notebook that she has she kind of like writes down asks you some questions about things um and seems to kind of really take it on board and yeah it takes you a good few hours to kind of recount the tory uh, the story with her asking questions um, but you get the sense that this is somebody, yeah, she's definitely seems to have similar powers to you, but not in the same way. But there's definitely some sort of shared history. And the more you learn and the things that you saw in like ages five and the stories that you've heard from Rethra, you're beginning to build this picture that the Laird of Land, these special elves that have these special powers, they seem to every few years one of them seems to show up uh the el seraph it's like every you know decade or so a couple of them show up the way that rethra spoke about them you know they were kind of rough in number and it seems to be that 
it was when the war against Starbane started that the Lairdalan first showed up. And they just seemed to appear on Erois. They didn't seem to have ever... No elf on Erois displayed the powers of the Lairdalan before Talus's war, before the Starbane forces came to Erois. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think she's she's just gonna sort of also say to her, I think that we have a good chance if we can if we can reunite all of us. I don't know how many there are, but if we can get us all together I. to fight, that's that's some power that we didn't have before. I didn't know I mean, that I can reach your out. kind existed. So that's a whole well, other same. power on top of what I already thought. The Laird of Lan is reported that the writings in the stone that we have is there's the three the three fam the three clans the three uh, uh, tribes uh, fire ice lightning. Now the frost plant the frost brand frost frost blessed family. Um, I can gather the the few that we have, but it's not many. It's maybe five, six of us, seven maybe with the eldest. And Rethra, I can try and track down some of the, the ones who command flame, but I've never seen powers like yours before, either. I just wonder, I mean, you talk about beyond in this astral sea and this world of Alfheim that was destroyed and all this, and I just, I think the majority of us might still be up there. And she kind of gestures up. I, you know, Rethra himself what? said that they were warriors, that they, they fought for... For Callus, I just wonder if there's a bunch of us are still doing that. I hope not, but there could well be. I mean, it's I could open things like doors on spacecraft that just didn't make sense. Only I could, mm. not the other people. I there's something there that we don't know yet, and I'm certainly not on his side i hope that no. none of our people are but we should be prepared just in case the teleth do live to fight and erois is our home we're not going to give it up to anybody without a battle i give you that much for sure and it's not just even the lay of the land there are still plenty of wild elf tribes even those that don't have our that don't have our powers that we can bring and unite still yeah, I, I think, I think we should try. I'm glad that there's someone else. I, I agree. Together, you seek out those you can. I'll do the same. And when I return to El Saraf, I think I want to try and meet this... Whoever gave us these powers, I want to try and meet them, ask them a few questions myself. There's a few blizzards. I'd, Maybe if I walk out into know. one. I, if you do find something, I'd love to know who that one is. If it's a different person, if it's the same person, I'd love to know where these you said things Thor. came from. Thor. Okay. Yeah. If it's the same one. All right. And she kind of is like, well, before you go, a good drink. I've got some good stuff. And she pulls out like this fur wrapped flask of like a kind of like oiled leather wine skin. And she like offers it to you. And it's it smells of like a heavy honeyed mead, but it smells strong. And, and yeah, she'll kind of give you an exchange uh of that nice. uh, if you wish as well nice sure cool um uh, cool. nice and lovely little evening of catching up on wild elf stuff uh anything from anybody else uh before people arrive go kim uh i don't want to rp this um just because i've sure. taken up a lot of time today but i think after the conversation with Tian gong nova will go to arvel and ask arvel if it's possible for him to put together an expedition to um, the Auric Peaks, which is where Nova was originally Sense heading to get a shard of mm -hmm. Tiangong, and just mm -hmm. see if he, he can f recover it and send it to her. Um, okay. And she'll sure. offer money and repayment and anything like yeah sure. to help with that. So we'll have it so that Arvel and Petal or Guinevere, Gwen, uh, is brought up into your stu into your suite. Um, Petal comes with like a big heavy backpack, uh, laden. You can see like parchment and pieces of like wands and staves that you know she seems to have been working on. Uh, there's actually like a little plant sticking out of a bag as well, like a potted plant that she's been carrying and stuff like that as well. Um, and she's kind of brought in. She seems to know the place. Like the guards all seem to kind of 
uh, like nod at her or like recognize her and stuff like that. Not in a kind of bowing to her way, but in a, oh yeah, that's Guinevere. Like they kind of just like, oh, hey Gwen kind of thing as, as she moves past. Um, Arvel is like pulling like a little wagon with stacks of bags on it. Like he has bought like so much luggage and he's just got loads of it and he's like wheeling it behind him like a little wooden kind of wagon that he's pulling. Uh, and it seems to be loaded up with like trade goods, um, all sorts of like weapons and things like that that it looks like he's maybe bought to try and sell on or something like that. Um, but yeah, they bring it all in. The guards go through every bag, like they pull everything of Arvel's out and it takes like another sort of like 30, 40 minutes of them just being like, like checking it all. Just like, Mr. Dagus, we can't allow you to take all of these swords in he's just like oh they, they're mine i'm gonna be selling them in two weeks you got it all right well at least store them somewhere safe i want i want a receipt for those and like you know he's arguing with them about stuff like that but eventually they're kind of brought in yeah uh, arvel is more than happy to kind of fund like a little expedition to go and try and search for it and see if they can find it you give him the best information you can um you know it's gonna be tough no but those mountains uh, they're all over the place and they're uh there's all sorts of critters and monsters in there but i can definitely put a team together and we can go trick it i just can't promise you it'll be done anytime soon is the only problem that's okay and um if you need anything if i can fund anything make sure your team are safe um please let me don't know. worry about I, that i've included some schematics no, 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 no. Hey, I, I've, I've got the money in the... of the ship yeah. All right, that's good. Stuff like that, that's perfect. But you don't worry about paying or any business like that. And trust me, I'll hire the best mercenaries I can find. Um, uh, when uh, Petal comes in, uh, she kind of nervously looks around um, and she kind of, you know, she sees Sentry and she obviously goes up and like, you know, she hugs into Sentry, puts her bags down. Um, you can still, still see that she's getting emotional and stuff like that. But she turns to the rest of you. Um, I just wanted to say... Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to come and stay here with you and be closer to Century. Uh, I know we've, before it was a little bit emotional, I, I didn't get to fully introduce myself. Um, uh, my name is Guinevere, Guinevere Astoria. Uh, it, 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 thank you. Thank you all. Any friend of Sentry's is a friend of ours. <laughs> Clearly you're a very Jeez. important one. <laughs> She's a very, very uh, friend. I don't think quite, uh, quite covers it. Sentry uh, was everything to me. She was my world when I was little. It's is it to mine? Is it uncustomary to hug you, even though I don't know you at all? <laughs> no, that sounds wonderful. And she just kind of comes up and gives you a hug as well. Uh, she just kind of like pats you on the back. I didn't quite catch all of your names, though. Perhaps now's a good time. Oh, well, well, this is I'm Sentry. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know you Sentry. Know, she, she knows Sentry. I'm Ayla. Ayla? Wonderful to meet you. And Lucius, was it? Lucius, yes. Uh, I'm Quill, and this is Nova. Um, I, 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 found, I found Sentry when... Uh, well, when she first awoke, actually, maybe I helped. I don't you know. Did. You definitely did. You definitely did. She shakes your wing. And, you know, it, it, it's she looks at you with, like, quite glassy, wet eyes again. You can see that, like, hearing that, you know, that you were the one that woke Sentry up. Thank you. I, I can't express how much that means to me. I... I mean, I, I, we thought that she was destroyed in the first few days after we teleported away. I was just, we just thought that she was dead, that she'd been destroyed by the Sundering. To know that you survived, that you, that you, you awoke again. So, when did you awake, Sentry? About four or five months ago <laughs> can't believe it i mean it makes well, sense why how long have why... you been awake for oh well well when danica found me i was still a little girl i i the sequester spell mother used it it sort of froze me in place i, I didn't age i didn't need to eat or sleep or breathe it i remember she she sung a song 
and told me that everything was going to be okay and to lay down and I just closed my eyes. I felt like I fell asleep and then I woke up again and they weren't there. There was this old lady. She looked older. She had bright red hair and there was fire in her hands. I thought she was going to hurt me, but she seemed to know me. She, she called me. She, she called me Guinevere. She told me to come to her and that, that I was going to be okay. I was asking, you know, where mother and father were, but uh, she she just said that they weren't there anymore uh, and that it was going to be okay. And obviously, I was a bit too young at the time to fully understand. I didn't even really... There was no remains for me to see. There was just nothing. So I went with Danica uh, and she... When I was a bit older, she had some of the tutors uh, explain to me what had happened, and I could understand it a bit better. And I thought that was it. I thought 500 years, you know, uh, ago. Uh, so I grew up, I, I studied, I played. They gave me a lovely little house and the shop and some money. And Danica would check in for me now and then, but otherwise I've just been living my life. I studied a little bit of magic, like Mother would have wanted me to, and practiced a little bit and kept up and looking after plants. I'm, I'm so glad you, well, I'm so glad Danica found you. I, I have a lot to ask her. I think, I mean, I remember when she, it was only a, I think a year or two years after she found me that Danica had to be reborn. She said that she'd gotten too infirm, that she'd gotten too old. And so she, had herself reborn um but so she's i guess in a way it, it, sort of like a little sister but also like a big sister to me she's always been there but even when she was big enough to speak and walk she talked to me like she knew me she told me things about solvin about my mother uh, she she taught me a little bit about magic even when she was far too small to know about those things um and she said that Sayana, the goddess, had given her a vision, sent her a vision of, of me trapped there in that little cave, I suppose, buried under the earth for so long. Um, and she said that uh, Sayana had told her it was time to wake me up. Well, thanks, Sayana. Thank Danica. Indeed. I'm sorry, I'm making this all very emotional uh, with Sentry, but it's it's uh, it's a lot. Um... Well, we, we have to thank Annika for all that she has done for you. She has given you a very comfortable life in Horizon. It begs the question of Sentry, what do we... You want to keep Petal safe and... I was going to suggest. Protected by you, what's the, what's the plan? If, well, if it's if it's okay with Petal, I'd I'd like her to come with us. Obviously, I know you, Petal. You've uh, you seem you you're doing so well, and you've got your shop. Would would you want to come with us? Well, it, it's it's. I mean, I the shop is just a place. I mean, it was given to me, and I've enjoyed running it and. It's given me something to do, but you know, it, I'm not, I'm not attached to it. Not in the same way I'm attached to you. But I'm also worried. I mean, for, you're here for this meeting, and and from what I understand, you're all heroes that have done much, and and you're going to be. There's this talk of the guards talking about this a potential war or, or some battle, and. Well, I just don't want to be in the way. I, I don't want to be a risk. I don't want you to be worrying about me. Uh, I don't know if, if... I mean, I feel like the safest place is with you, Sentry, but uh, I, I don't know if that's the case. If, if you're going to be going into battles, I'm not a warrior or anything like that. I know a little magic, but I'm no, I'm no war wizard or combat mage. I mean, I, I I know a little bit about enchantments and 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 things like that. I, if there's a way that I can help, I'd be more than happy to do it. But I have a suggestion. Please, Mister okay. Mister Lucius. Yes. Have you heard of Gusthaven? Of 
course, another one of the Sky Cities. Lucius, well. you tell another person about the base. What base? <laughs> Nothing. There's not. Uh, uh, Lucius, Lucius uh, is uh, from Gusthaven. No base. It's a pencil. We ha I have a secret basement, and it's very cool, okay. and it's very right. protected, and you could stay there, and you'll be protected, not another worry on Sentry's mind. I could adorn it with, uh, you could have a bedroom, <laughs> I could install a bathroom, uh, you could have an ensuite, maybe it something like that. It doesn't have those things already? No. I, I can get them requested straight away. Oh. It's well, very I... much just one room. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Mr. Lucius. Uh, I don't mean to seem ungrateful, but would there be much of a difference between staying there or staying here? I mean, nobody True. knows who I am except for Danica. I at least know the streets here. I, I know the guards. I can come here to the Citadel if I need to be protected. It is well protected here. However, it's also it's drawing a lot of attention right now. That's the only issue. I mean, is there... I just don't want to be... I don't want to be in a strange city that I don't know, in a in a secret basement that... Uh, what if I needed somebody? What if I needed to reach out to someone? Um, I think maybe you have... Is there a way that I can travel with you, but not with you all the time? Oh, it's a storm chaser. Yes, you could stay on the storm chaser. We can reinforce it. We could add more uh, defenses to it. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Our ship, our, our crew's I'm lovely. Plating. Our crew, our crew, our, I mean, that... our beast walkers. They're amazing. I mean, that sounds Why don't we... safer than just being in a basement somewhere. We could just make a decision after all this meeting stuff is done, because then we'll know what the status is here, maybe. Hmm? I feel like I'm safe here now at least uh, the, they're taking security here very seriously and i'm with mm. sentry I, I feel safe here for now but yes if there's something in the future I, I i'd like to find a way to be with beside you but not with you um all the time that's understandable okay and because we're already over we're gonna have to end the episode here because I'm pretty sure uh, Pet and Boba <laughs> need to go sorry, live Pet on Yogs. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, they'll, they'll, they'll very, they're very sweet. They'll understand. We're gonna have to end the episode there. Oh, um, did not realize the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this was a very big RP session. I had a bunch more stuff. Didn't get there. That's fine. We'll do it next week. Um, mm -hmm. That's All it right. for this episode. We're gonna end on Yogs now. So if you yes. want to listen to donations and stuff, head on over to High Rollers D and D, where we're just gonna read out donations and sort Otherwise. of post game chat otherwise yoscast thank you very much bye, uh petting yogs. boba thank bye, you guys bye. sorry goodbye enjoy your stream goodbye bye 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 hello 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 high rollers <laughs> hello, 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 hello. 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 hello welcome to high rollers party after people? dark yeah the party Ooh. people whoa that's where it one gets nasty Woo! that one. was a chatty Ooh. episode that Another was a one. lot of people but hey how's, yeah how's your, your brain mark yeah. yeah i'm pretty sure like i <laughs> the accents were terrible i gave people the same voices oh, great. You but you know what we got through it we got through it i promise i don't yeah, promise that those bad. people will have the same accents if you speak to them again <laughs> i don't make that promise but we'll see what happens the um, good news is though is that we had one roll to this session and it was a natural 20 yep. which makes this the most successful session we have ever you're played. right god damn yep. you're right for a handshake. Way is down. For a handshake. <laughs> For a handshake. Yeah. Not bad. But Not sometimes bad. you don't need to roll dice. Sometimes you just no. I'm just chat with your mate. The same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, best rolling session we've ever had. Um, yeah. Man, that was a lot of people. I felt so. I felt so bad when we got to the final person because, like, all these other people we had some kind of like connection with, like. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, like Mirskir and Savona and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And then we just got to Gisela and it was like, hey. yeah, we kind of, we flew over you once and that's about once. it. So your glass was kind of yeah. on the edge. Yeah. I have literally yeah. no idea who you are. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, and, and, there was yeah, kind of like... and 
that's one of those ones where like I, I there's no way to have that representative in any way connected to you because I was just like they've never had to do it. <laughs> Although saying that, yeah. like um, Zemix uh, Elodovian, you've never gone to Zyphina either, so like they're completely new. Like, but they had yeah. at least the priest lady yeah. who could be like, I know gods and stuff, and calls like I know gods and stuff too. <laughs> yeah, it's like a loose connection. Um, <laughs> yeah, the grand strategist at the start. Yeah, man, I am. I'm yeah. exhausted. That was like going to an actual yeah. thing where you have to speak yeah. to people, you know? Well, that was, oh. I'm glad that that came across. I tried to kind of set it up as like, right, here is the UN council. Everyone's going to have yeah. their name card. <laughs> right, everyone's sit in the big circular pit. Like the citizen of, of uh, Zephena has the floor. And then he's like, hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, well, it's cool. Everyone likes us now as well. Everyone, yeah. everyone, almost <laughs> including the Dragonborn. Everyone tolerates us. I mean, us. like is Yay. a strong word. Yeah. Everyone knows us. They're not actively uh, trying to kill us. So it's great. Not yet. Which I, as a point, by the way, I love that for ages, you guys were convinced the Dragonborn were like, they're going to kill us. They're going to fucking kill us. They're going to string Nova up and murder her uh, yeah, just... for this thing. And I was like, no, they're not. I mean, no, that's a very, I think it was a very Nova <laughs> thing to think because she <laughs> is like so naive she like yeah. you know the law is the law and she broke dragon was, law and like is so there not like a little bit of kim being jail. afraid that mark's like coming to get you like mark's like because if you are coming to get me th that's fun that's fine that's just the hadar that that's coming to get us <laughs> yeah yeah, I've got bigger <laughs> things to worry about right now than some pissed off dragons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Lucius's What's that thing point? from Cali of a Chance of Meatballs where it's like, there's that scene where like, they're talking and the cop's just like sprinting behind them. It's like a darling like, <laughs> in the background. Horizon meeting. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, would y'all guys like some donations? Oh, yes, please. Yes. Alrighty. We had a donation I'm from I'm also going to convert to sitting. Okay, we had a donation from Frenchy Thousand and One. Thank you very much. A fifty-five dollar do donation from Dave uh, Dave Evol. Um, first time do, watching do, do, live. Do, do, do. Here's a dollar for every day it took me to watch from episode one. You guys inspired me to DM a friendly game with my son, and we're both having so much fun. Thank you. Fifty-five days Aww. to catch up. Oh my god, that's great. Yeah. Um, my feet were hurting. I've been stood up all day. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just created a second slow blink. <laughs> yeah, it's just the slow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chromium T46 donated. Thank you very much. Crosshairs donated a quarter hundo. Uh, hey, I rollers. <laughs> Quick update. Two weeks ago, I was on episode 51, and now 68, so I'll be caught up in a few weeks. <laughs> oh my God. However, however, I sadly found out my two campaigns that I play are both at the same time as both Erois and Strahd, oh, so I guess it will be what? Vod Squad forever. That's that's okay, that's 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 yep, that's all chances. right. It's, uh, it's uh, Vod Squad or Pod Squad for you, and that's a nice place to be, because boy howdy, there's some great people there too. Um, mm, yep. Whoa, Crispy uh, has donated. Crispy boy. Uh, three hundo, a triple oh, hundo. Oh, Crispy. Oh, Crikey, thank you. Stop it, Crispy. That's insane. Uh, thank you on so much. behalf of H and A, who devoured Erois in eight weeks and are now up to date, both have had uh, some tough real life things to deal with recently, and Erois has really helped them to cope. Thank you to Aww. all of you for giving them something to look forward to. Well, oh, thank you very much, Christy, and also, thank you, Chris. and thank also you, to H and A. Thank you very much yeah. for catching up, and welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are okay. Um, welcome. Yeah, hope all is going well. Uh, Caleb hey, Mondorian with a quarter hundo. Uh, Ooh, quick, quick, favorite sweet shop treat. Go. What's your favorite sweet shop shop treat? Three. Oh, sour cherries. Okay, uh, Katie. The little vampire fangs. Nova, Kim, the other one. Uh, any of them? Co cola bottles, sour cola bottles. So I don't know, all of them. Pick and mix. P Rock. Pick and mix. Ah. Lemon bonbons. Mm. Mark. Uh, Black Jackson and and fruit salads or fizzy cola bottles. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I'm changing my fizzy answer. Fizzy cola bottles. That's what I meant. <laughs> 
fifties. Fizzy cola bottles, yeah. Fizzy yeah, cola bottles or blackjacks and fruit salads. Are you going to have both? Balls, 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 baby! Balls. Yes. <laughs> oh, gross. And so gross. Balls. That is gross. Oh, yeah, that I love gross. that shit. Ooh. Although I love <laughs> blackjacks. Why do I not like aniseed balls, but I love blackjacks? Texture. So I got a kilogram of balls to Thanks throw into so. your face if you want them. Those little, the little vampire fangs, like there is always w at least one that I have to put them in like little fangs and <laughs> make a little vampire face. Ah. Okay. I, I also to. quite like, I don't know, I don't know if this has changed now that I've gotten older, but I kind of like, you know, milk bottles with the kind of powdery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of fucking love them. Yeah. I kind of love them. They're pretty good. They're underrated. Those are pretty underrated. Pretty nuts too. Um, Caleb Mondorian is in chat. Uh, Caleb Mondorian is in chat that just said, "Annecy balls are the fucking tits." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, nice. Yog's body has donated with. Sorry, I've been out of the picture for so long. Went through a rough patch at the start of Aroes, so never really got going. But I'm flying through the episodes now and loving oh. it. Got to reinforce my title as the Percy Pig's sweet guy. Expect oh, bountiful Percy gifts. Percy Pig's. Why are there so many They're sweet chat too. all of a sudden? Oh. They're pretty good too. <laughs> sweet. Pretty good. Pretty well, good. I'm glad, I'm glad that you can enjoy the episodes now, Yog's body. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. Uh, Ash has Welcome donated back. with Heyo, Vod Squad here. Really quick statement at Mark regarding uh, last week's session. How dare you making me cry twice in one sitting? The audacity. <laughs> Apologies, Mark. I also fucking cried, but I'm not apologizing. You know, come on. Apologize. You know, it's fine. No, Who didn't? I won't apologize. I'll not um, apologize for feels. Uh, oh, I've got to stop burning through these because I just refreshed. Sarah Manma has donated a half hundo, uh, and they say wow. from oh, Sarah Manna and Sarah Manna's hubby, we love you guys, and watching the streams brings a great amount of joy. Thank you for Thank all you. what you do. Thank you very much, Thank Sarah. Sarah Thank you. Um, you know, I have so much big love. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you so much for everything you do. Yeah. Varys has donated yeah. with a message. Thank you very much. Darrow has donated with, this break went by so quickly, but anyways, all the politicking is something that I hate to see IRL, but is absolutely just amazing to watch. Also, Mark's shirt is mwah, perfection. Here's your shirt. <laughs> you didn't see it? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Are you trash me free? Good. I like it. It's from Papa um, Core. It's my life. Hell yeah. Uh, Newton has donated as well twice. Thank you very much for those. But I'm on a speed run. Uh, so Capasus has donated with, hey, y'all, just realized uh, today that I've been watching High Rollers for almost a fourth of my life. Uh, love what you will bring to the group. Whoa. There will always be a place in my heart for Granny Trell. And Mark's too, apparently. Thanks for making Sunday something to look forward to. Thank you very much, Kappa Uh Sorry about Jeez. the other three quarters. Um... <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you know, high rollers isn't bad. Sorry I wasn't filled with high rollers as well. <laughs> sorry I wasn't there for the rest one, of you, you know? One seventh of my life, I think, has been high rollers. I'd say five, five years, yeah, one seventh. I don't want to do the math. It's a lot. I'd rather play. not. Uh, Mr. Falcar has donated a quarter hundo. So, over the last three bam, bam, bam. years, I've watched roughly 1,500 hours of High Rollers. I've watched uh, Lightfall three times, and I've loved it every time. Aroas has been rewatched several times as more episodes have come out. Oh I just want to say thanks for all the laughs. Wow. What? Thank you for watching. Thank thanks you. Thanks for all the watches. Thanks for all the view counts yeah. on oh YouTube. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Thank oh you, Mr. Falcar, our view bot. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Another Mark has donated thirty dollars dues with thank you for the years of entertainment. You all, maybe mostly Mark, are a great inspiration for me as a GM and player. I met you at YogCon, and it still seems unreal to me when I look at the player's handbook that you all signed. There you go. Aww. Yay! <laughs> thank you very awesome much, much. Another Mark. Marsh Tomp. Tim. <laughs> Coffee Bean Roaster Aficionado Recap, very envious of the coffee. Katie, a delight. News Kim, Troth, and Matty Matt Matt. C'est moi, Moist Boy, Marsh Tomp. Wow, that <laughs> intro was basically my whole dono running out of characters. Only 19 left now. Eight now. Three no. Got me with Simwa Moist Boy. No. Yeah, Simwa Moist Boy. I do like so the strategy smart. of just moist counting boy. down 
counting down how many characters you've got left in your donation. I like that. Uh, Chubby Metalhead has donated a half hundo with what's up, my insert gender neutral term here. Just want to say thank you. I started watching when my granddad died in October and you have helped me immensely. So take my money, you filthy gender neutral term. Also, I'm getting some High Rollers merch soon. Stay sexy. Thank you very much, Chubby Metalhead. We will. Uh, I hope you enjoy Aww, the merch. I hope you enjoy yeah. it very, very much. You'll be sexy in it. Yeah. Uh, guaranteed. Reapers, guaranteed sexy. Reapers has donated with much love, y'all, and keep killing it. Thank y'all for all the content over the years. Thank you very much. Finally, we just got ourselves our first keep killing it, King. Uh, Serico has donated with Clear Skies from Minnesota. I love myself a good diplomacy episode as well as family reunions. Good DMing Mark and good RP everyone else. I wonder as to what the meetings hold. Take it easy, my dudes. Uh, just death and chaos and destruction. The Herve has donated. <laughs> um, hi, Rollers. Vod Squad for me this week, and not going to lie, I'm scared. Mark, if anything happens to Petal, I swear to see Asuka, I'm going to revolt. Don't you dare, Mark. Please, for the love of Spell Clash, just leave her be and have a warm plate on me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I make no promises. <clears throat> Oh, Serico man. has donated with the Fishmen. Uh, Natalie oh. Hawthorne and Daft Day 41 donated with no message. Thank you very much. Cyberwing with a full ass hundo. Hey, wow. I'm wow. happy to see that Sentinel Prime got to see her little girl. I want to say that Ayla make me a Str Strom Herald and he out at sea and Rex Strad first time the party gone in. If my PC Zato could meet Ayla, he would be your best drinking buddy. There you go. Nice. Zato. Tom really Zato. had to read that one. <laughs> had to really had to go deep Focus. on that one. Marva Louie has donated with props to Mark for playing all these cool NPCs. Absolutely love Ayla and Morgane's epic handshake. Predator handshake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> please I'm please sure don't let anything that. happen to Petal. Um, Fan art. Another one, another one on the list of the Protect Petal Pact is Marva Louie. Uh, love you guys. Kiss, kiss, smile, smile. Thank you very much. Marsh Tom. At the end of that, I half expected Trump to tell Petal about the one, the only, the mythic, prolific author, A. Plumbus, in a way to train her. Also, it's my headcanon that the figurehead of the Storm Chaser is A. Plumber. <laughs> a plumber? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Also, also, Mama Quill is so wholesome, so pure. Um, Mama and Marsh Tom again. Awesome. Marsh Tomp again with engage sitting mode. Sitting mode activated. <laughs> right, nice. Um, uh, just as a point, uh, anybody who wants all of the NPC names, I've just put it in the High Rollers live, live stream chat Discord. So if you want Boom, NPC a names, to go to Discord. Join I'm not Discord. Live, live stream any... chat is spoilers chat. I'm not changing any of my notes. It's going to be the that's way fine. that you, I wrote you that, guys don't need to. That. This yeah. is more for wiki people. Wiki people. How do you wiki people want names? Wrong. How do you spell river? I, uh, I don't know. R e e v i r. Reaver. 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 Yeah. Reaver. Um, yeah. That's mainly Darrow. for Spec, who's been doing all the Yogs wiki, the the High Rolls wiki stuff. By the way, yeah, the High Rolls wiki doing an amazing is job on that. Awesome. By the way, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting so quickly updated as well. Um, Darrow has donated a double hundo. Um, and they oh, say, thank you. I just wow. got my stimmy. <laughs> I just got my stimmy bucks from Daddy Biden. So this is for all the donos I can give between episode That's not what one... it's meant for. We don't need your <laughs> stim bucks. <laughs> that well, in that case, thank you, Daddy Biden from the stimmy bucks. Um, <laughs> But... <laughs> That's meant for you, you know that, right? Because yeah. of the whole pandemic. You gotta keep that. You. you gotta keep that. Keep it. Keep it. Um, but if not, thank you very much, Darrow, and also Daddy Biden. Um, Kenton, Kayla Mondorian again. Uh, all of the sweet choices are very good. Mark is best boy, though, because blackjacks are top quality. They are. They are great. They are. Um, they are pretty dang good. It's been so uh, long. Oh, and Bandai Nenzai with a quarter hundo. Uh, hey Rollers, able to watch a full episode live after finishing my first ever campaign. My party and helpers managed to stop the Destroyer of Worlds from rubbing us out from existence with one turn from a TPK. Now, my Tiefling Sunday has a Queendom to run. 
There we go. Congrats. Very cool. I love the idea Being of a the tiefling called of Sunday. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if it's spelled like dessert Sunday or the day Sunday, but I love both. It's spelled like Sunday. Anyway, we had some gift <laughs> subs from Being Wolfie, Nirok, Jayagon, TJ King, Scooper Rock, D Miller1841, Kayla Mondoria, Nightjar, Cola Cola Man, and Saramana. And we also had some bits, uh, $20 reduced from a gender pirate or a gender pirate. Um, $10 from Sarimana and Masked Elephant as well. And a Yogg's Dono from Ace of Thorns. Kim starts talking about scrying on Starbane just before the meeting. Natural 20 time. Didn't matter either way. He's protected. <laughs> um, yeah. And the sub, the sub message of the week from Nightjar is from Luna Secret. And it says, just over a year now. Unfortunately, can't watch live today as I'm getting fit and going jogging. But I'll enjoy the podcasts whilst driving to work. Keep up the amazing work, guys. Thank you very get much, fit, Luna get Secret. Fit. Um, get fit. Thank you very much. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that is everything. Some very generous donations there. Um, thank you very you much. I've got a last thank minute dono in. I'm not sure. It's just popping up on my screen. Uh, one more from Newton. Uh, Speedrun. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not a happy Eldritch Horror. There you go. Well, there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Newton. Are Eldritch Horrors happy? No, apparently, maybe. Uh, that is be. it no, from us. Thank you all so much. I think that's the end of the stream. Uh, we will be back on Thursday <laughs> up to you. for uh, Curse of Strahd, where we're going to raise some money for cats protection. Going to save all yeah. the cats, saving all the tiny cats. Save those cats. Save, save those cats for me. Uh, go and check out the High Rollers Discord. Check out the High Rollers Wiki while you're at it as well uh, on Fandom. <laughs> Um, fandom wiki uh, and yeah we'll be back next mm. time we'll see you then uh, bye bye then so are you, bye. you ending the stream because uh, let's go again new episode at least play something new play something different hey, welcome back to six. high rollers 106 <laughs> oh no no guys no. <laughs> last time <laughs> Last time on a no. Rose. Welcome, welcome Bye. to High Rollers 106, where me and Tom and Trot and Kim all play Valorant for three hours. Right here we go. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. Yeah. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.